Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Pies Hot Summer Family Day Open Training Session. My name is Glenn Moriarty. I'll be your host for this evening. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I'd like to pay respects to elders past and present. Uh, we pay our respects to all Indigenous people here today, wherever you're joining us from. Um, who come from many Indigenous nations across the beautiful country. Well, as I said, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Tonight we have the stream, which will be the Open Training with Match Sim, brought to you by VRGF. Also, a big shout-out to our awesome sponsors in KFC, Emirates, and Latrobe, down here at the Holden Centre. So the way the, uh, the format for this evening will be, we've got three 25-minute quarters, uh, two teams tonight, so one of the teams will be coached by Hayden Skipworth, the other will be hosted by, uh, coached by Scott Selwood, so we've got Scoot v Skip, two sides, pretty random, so we probably won't really announce the sides because at stages throughout the uh, match sim tonight, these teams will change, so we won't go through those, but we've pretty much got the whole list out there tonight, uh, no Grundy, no Dugowie, no Isaac Chug and no Jordan Roughhead will be joining us here very shortly. So um, after training um, for the fans that are here with us at the Holden Centre tonight, we'll have the season launch for netball where the team will be presented their dresses uh, and then the AFL players will be presented their uh, Guernseys for 2022. But the real treat, I'm joined in the commentary position by a couple of the greatest people here at our football club. I'm, of course, I'm talking about 2021 all-Australian and Collingwood defender, Ruby, Ruby Schlasher. Welcome, Ruby. Thank you for having me, Glenn Moriarty. You were sitting there going, when's he going to wrap up this intro? Oh, no, my God, he doesn't stop talking, does he? <laughs> um, and we also have uh, Jordan Ruffhead joining us. As I mentioned, he won't be playing tonight, but um, he's just down in the gym working on the uh, the beach weights. He needs all the help he can get. <clears throat> that upper body's looking a bit skinny this right. year. Right, yes. Well, you would know, Ruby, because, of course, he is um, so team defence coach for AFLW, besides being... Uh, Obviously, one of our elite AFL players. He's doing quite a bit of work in the AFLW space over the last couple of years, and he's got the back line absolutely firing, including yourself. Yeah, absolutely. We've um, had the pleasure of working with Ruff for the last couple of years, and um, he's a really yeah, valued member of our coaching staff now, and the girls love working with him. Um, I guess as a player, you sort of have an understanding that less words is more sometimes, and I've never met anyone that can jam his message into such few <laughs> words, which the girls love. Um, but yeah, no, he, he's great for us girls, and obviously his knowledge is just second to none. And he's um, he obviously had a, a real impact straight away because last year was um, standout season for you, um, but also the rest of the back line really sort of seemed to mature, a lot more composed. Uh, do you attribute a lot of that to his coaching? And you can say yes or no because he's not actually here at the yeah, moment. Yeah, I know. I could trash talk him all I want, really. Um, yeah, no, 100%. He was massive for us as our back line coach and installed a lot of confidence in us. And um, it's funny... It, our line meetings before a game would generally go for about 30 seconds and he'd give us three points and it'd always end in have fun. So <laughs> that's what I mean. It was a man of few words, but that was just him trusting in our natural abilities. And, you know, we've got some star players back there, like, you know, young Lauren Butler and Geordie Allen, Stacey Livingston. Um, so, yeah, we've got a good crew and he just knew exactly what to do to um, guide us there. Yeah, he's a man of many words. Everything he says is sort of quite poignant. He's not a guy that rant and raves. Um, and I think he's a lot like that with the rest of the, the AFL side as well. He's a bit of a general down back, but good to hear he's working wonders. Um, now, beside you two champions, for the people that are actually here tonight at the open training session in the glass house, thanks to CUB, we're running our pies at the pub session. So we rolled those out last year at a couple of pubs throughout Melbourne and got a couple of our former players to come along for the night. So down there tonight, hosting the event is none other than Alex Fasolo, the Prince of Perth, Fazzy, Fazzy boy. Uh, still refers to himself in the third person. Hopefully he'll come up and have a chat with us later on. Um, but down there for the night, they've got Tony Shaw, Nick Maxwell, Tark and Lockyer, um, Luke Ball. Um, so obviously yeah, Tony Shaw, 1990 Premiership captain, Nick Maxwell and Luke Ball from 2010, along with Jared Blair and Nathan Brown here in the second group with uh, Shane Wakelin and Lyndon Dunn. So we're hoping that we're going to get uh, a couple of those guys come through the stream at some stage and have a little bit of a chat with us. Um, but yeah, the way the format will run tonight is, it's, look, it's pretty relaxed. We won't be sort of commentating on the game. We'll just be shooting the breeze, talking about what's happening at the club and, uh, and more importantly, having a bit of fun. So um, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the presentation after the game. Um, 
So for the players, for, for netball and for, um, for, net, uh, for, for AFL. And for those that are interested in the netball too, if you're thinking about heading along to the Team Girls Cup that's happening next weekend, so that's the, uh, the first pre-season hit out for all of the SSN clubs. Um, that's the tournament that will be uh, held over at uh, <coughs> the State Hockey Netball Centre over in Parkville. And for those looking to attend, um, if you go to Ticket Tech and put in the code TGC22, uh, you get a 10% off uh, for the tickets for next weekend. So that's all the teams playing. Collingwood, by the way, are the reigning Team Girls Cup champions. They won it back in uh, 2019, uh, and we didn't have it in 2021 and 20, uh, 2020 and 2021 due to COVID. But onto the footy, and the big guys joined us from the gym, Ruffy. The Welcome to the telecast. Yeah, well, you that's you're, nice. You're, that's got a nice, that's got a bit of a bit of a ring to well, it. Well, when you just walk out of the gym, you look massive. Love that. It's good feedback. Mm. It's good feedback. <laughs> Week after surgery, I need some, some solid <laughs> bit of support. So thank you. I'm happy to be here. It's a beautiful night. And uh, how was the gym session? You were, uh, probably who did you have in there with you? Was it Grundy, Dagoe, and Chuggy, the guys that aren't playing tonight? Were they down there doing uh, some beach weights as well? I had Dagoe and Chuggy in there. Um, haven't seen the big fella, big BG. He'll just be doing everything right to prime himself for uh, for round one. But, um, yeah, had a good run with, with Chuggy and George before. Um, it'd be nice to get a big guy out there running around with us because I get left behind. I yeah. really get left in their dust. So, um, small rehab group, which is which is great. Most of the boys are out here playing um, playing in the intra-club. So, yeah, it should be, uh, should be a good crack. Uh, before we get onto the teams for tonight, give us a little bit of an update on how your injury is going. So, you had surgery on the shoulder. Where are you at? Yeah, a bit of a funny one. Um, so end of last season, I went in and, and got it checked out, had it scanned, and um, sort of nothing appeared on the scan um, other than your general wear and tear as you get um, after a few seasons of AFL footy. And uh, it's it just been hanging around, and um, I didn't feel like I was going to be ready to go out there and play against the big key forwards um, in a couple of months' time. So I went and had another scan and appointment with the surgeon, and he just basically said, let's let's go in there and have a look, give it a clean out, um, and get you moving as, as well as possible. And um, it's kind of a weird one, but a good one because they found a, a chip of bone that was floating in there that didn't appear on the scan. So they've taken that out, um, and hopefully that's been the, the source of the problem, and um, it'll be onwards and upwards from here. I'm already feeling good and back in the gym and, and back running, so um, being pretty aggressive with the, the rehab and hopefully be back out there before you know it. It's a bit of a lonely place, rehab, at the moment because I believe you're the only player on the on the uh, on the injured list because Geordie and Chuggy are, are pretty much ready to go. Brody, by the way, I've just been told is sick, so nothing to worry about there. He's just not feeling up to uh, the match sim tonight. But you're in there all alone, which is is sad for you, but a uh, good sign for the team that we're injury wise, we're actually in a in a pretty good space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've had a few guys sort of pop in there. Obviously, Pendles prior to, to Christmas with his leg, um, and a few of the other guys just for really short periods. But um, yeah, everyone's fighting fit. Sucks for me because I'm, um, yeah, like you said, it's a lonely place and I've just spent the whole preseason running, get in, finally getting into playing <laughs> matches and I'm back to running. So. And it's not my favourite thing to do. No, uh, no. People who were here prior to the session will know. I was, um, yeah, I was really lagging behind. So. I can vouch for that. I saw him running with uh, Chuggy and George and, yeah, they had a couple of metres on the rough. Feedback, I hate to, yeah, hate to bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, George, to give us a bit of an update on, on the AFL, uh, AFLW program, girls going pretty well. We've had, obviously, just the two losses but to two very good sides. We, we went down um, by very short margins to both Brisbane and Frio, probably the two, you'd almost say, flag con uh, contenders at this stage or flag favourites. But um, girls going well. Look like they're starting to, to, to get a, gain some more confidence as the weeks go on and we look like we might be heading into our best footy at the business end of the season. Yeah, well, Rubes is probably a better place to, to talk about this. But, I mean, from my perspective... Um as long as the girls are out there having fun and, and playing good footy, it's, that's all we can ask for. And, and I think last week, that's what we got back to against West Coast, was all the reports came back. I, I didn't make the trip to Perth, but the reports came back that it was, there was a really good vibe out there and, and it was fun footy. Um, and and when, you're playing, when you're having fun out there, it's when you, you play your best. So we've just got to be able to maintain that, I think. What do you reckon, Rubes? Yeah, it'd be uh, nice to have a few more outings like last week. So a few hard challenges ahead but see what we can put out there and it doesn't get any easier this weekend the task coming up against north melbourne another one of the quality sides of the competition we're heading down to tassie for that so you're on the road again yeah fly so in fly out and a shared plane ride on the way home shared chartered flight so it could be right. an awkward one uh hopefully more awkward than, for them than it is for us <laughs> that's right i'll but make sure i sit next to one of their coaches and <laughs> sort of work out the game plan before we get down there uh now it looks like we're not far off from uh, getting underway now Ruffy and Rube, what I love about these pre-season intra-club hit-outs is 
every year there's always a couple of guys that usually guys that are on the fringe that go out in these games and have a red hot crack because they want to get into that 22. They're trying to stake a claim for their for their uh, position in the side. And I remember, you know, probably, you know, what was it, six years ago, seven years ago, when when Braden Maynard was still one of the younger players, hadn't quite cemented his spot in the 20, regular 22. I remember him absolutely poleaxing someone out here on the wing in front of the glass house. And from that moment on, I was like, that guy's Van Inkham. He obviously really wants to play. Who are the guys that we're going to see tonight that you think are going to have a red hot crack? I'm going first. Yeah. Uh, I think um, <laughs> one who I've, I'm always impressed by, had a great summer, um, had a great year last year, Isaac Quainer. Yep. I, I think he's one who's really going to stamp himself on the competition um, this year. So I'd be looking for him to um, to have a really strong night tonight. Um, a couple of the other young guys, I've really be, re, been really impressed with the way Charlie Dean stepped into the program. Um, obviously a little bit more mature than some of the other draftees. Um, only 20 years old, but um, really strong and competitive in 1v1s. Um, I'm not sure who he's going to line up on. I'm just trying to find him. There he is out there in the white team. Um, but he's one who, yeah, I, I've been impressed since he walked in, what is it, only eight or ten weeks ago. So those two for mine. Yeah, well, he was fantastic in, in the VFL last year. Um, so obviously... I actually know, had lunch with him today. I didn't realise he only played nine games of VFL football. And dominated for Williams. Dominated, won yep. the Father Gill medal. Um, yeah, went from undrafted in 19 to picked up in the rookie draft uh, end of last year. Um, now it looks like, is that Finlay McRae wearing the number eight out there tonight in the middle of the ground? He's just lying Yeah, they'll try behind. and confuse you. The boys tend to do this. They, right. they like this to throw on they... someone else's jumper <laughs> just to really give the coaches and, and the fans a bit of a headache. Um, so don't be surprised to see Mark Keane's number even floating around out there somewhere tonight. Right. He's in Ireland, I can confirm. <laughs> Hasn't made the trip back for the intra club. And as predicted, Scott Pendlebury lining up on the half back line for the Magpies in the black team tonight so first bounce underway with coxie with the glasses on and have a look at that nick dacos straight into it out of the middle drives the ball up forward and nice solid contest and there's our man brad mono so ball is going to be zipping around tonight perfect night for footy here at the holden center and of course there's cricket on at the g there's a game of um i think the victory are playing or one of the teams are playing over at um at amy park so it's going to be Quite an awesome night in the precinct. But, yeah, Ruffy, as a, as a player, what do you expect from these kind of hit-outs? Well, first thing I want to say, did you see Charlie Dean just back back with the flight and absolutely get hammered, um, bounce up? He's, he's been a little slow to get up. He's back into it now. But that's what, what I've been so impressed by. He's, he's courageous. He's um, he'll, he'll put his head over it. But what we want to see, I mean, obviously change of coaching, um, coaching panel, um, change of game plan, game style um, across the, the summer. Um, we just want to see the, the, the guys. It, it's not about kicks, marks, handballs, goals tonight. It's it's more about system. Yep. Um, we want to we want to see the system come to come to the fore, um, and hopefully we yeah our, our young guys um, will have picked it up through the the education. Obviously the the more senior guys um, who have been around have, have seen um, different game plans across their year across their years at the club and have probably seen most things. But the young guys, inexperienced guys, are, are it's new to them. Um, so hopefully they can really perform their, their roles in the system tonight well. And we've got our first goal from uh, Harvey Harrison, num wearing the number 36 for the black team tonight. So he's got on the scoreboard nice and early. So Ruffy, obviously first, you know, pre-season under Craig McRae. How's Fly going? And also, you know, the coaches around him, we've got Lepper, um, Brennan Bolton. How's that sort of new coaching group come in? Yeah, re really strong. It's a, it's a really strong coaching panel. I mean, Fly, yes, it's his first time as a head coach, but he's, he's had a a really lengthy um, coaching or coaching experience in, in, in the AFL system. Um, development here, Richmond, um, Hawthorne, um, and now back around to, to head coaching here and um, has got some really strong support around him. Obviously, Bolts, Brendan Bolton and, and Justin Lepich are, are two former AFL head coaches. So I think that's going to hold in really good stead to just have their sort of guiding eyes, um, keeping an eye on, on him through the year. Um, but Fly's been great. He's, he's really strong with his values and, and the way he wants to play the game. And um, and having that support's been, yeah, really beneficial for him, I think. Uh, we can see Nick Dacos just slotting into the side beautifully, already getting his hands on it a couple of times and just a really good ball user. How impressed have you been with his pre-season so far? I think he's the best kick in the team already, wow. which, which seems ridiculous <laughs> when you've you got Scott Pendlebury and Steel <laughs> Sidebottom out there. But um, the boys call him Whisper because he talks to the footy. 
Yep. And um, Ruby, you've been doing a bit of analysis on the uh, on the list. You've got a, a few players that we're going to talk about tonight. First off, the man we mentioned before, the big Texan in the middle of the ground with his glasses. And you've been doing a bit of homework on Yeah, on, uh, I mean, spots. as if he didn't stand out enough. Now he's got some goggles on his head just to <laughs> make sure it gets three votes. It's like when players wear a wear a helmet, it just, just get the three vo votes. I think it's that sort of tactic. Um, so, yeah, I think he's still waiting on getting those AFL certified for um, the season. But um, I think last year he was saying these contacts were falling out with contact and, and all that sort of thing. So um, hopefully see him rocking the goggles this season. Some really good work there by Jack Given. Really composed there, Ruffy. Just could squeezed. have blazed away, couldn't he? Yeah, yeah, really could have blazed away from deep in the pocket, but um, squeezed up on the boundary there and just had the um, had the level headedness to slot it back there to Tyler Brown, who has uh, kicked another one for the black team. So they've started off quite well. Might have to see some uh, see some change. Who's coaching the black team? Do we know? Is it Scoot or Skip? Doesn't matter. But back to um, Mason um, Ruffy, who Ruby was just talking about. Obviously, when uh, he was uh, first arrived at the club. Fly was was a development coach here at, at the time, and uh, he looks like he's um, he's a little bit reinvigorated under Fly this preseason. Yeah, like it's a, it's a funny one because the the goggles were a bit of a obviously a, will, will be a talking point um, coming into the season, but I think they've really helped him out. Like he's marking the footy really well, um, and obviously eyesight is, is is key to the game. If you can't see the footy, it's pretty hard to catch it. So mm. um, he has had a really impressive um, impressive summer. He's, he's taking a lot of contested marks and. And I know he wants to, to take his game up another notch this year. Yeah, well, I think it's all confidence too. Well, just that, you know, if it gives him that level of protection and that extra bit of confidence, he's uh, he's going to be a great player for us in 2022. And um, Ruby, the man that um, uh, Ruffy mentioned before, Charlie Dean, number 43 for the Pies. You've got to, done a bit of homework on him as well. Yeah, um, I was chatting to Scotty Selwood earlier, who's actually our midfield coach at the AFLW program now. So we love having him, but um, he was giving him a massive rap. And obviously with the big man next to me out for the first few weeks of the season, um, it opens up a huge opportunity down in the back line. And um, Scooter was saying, you know, at, at the end of the day, when the lights are off, you always, he's the last one there looking at vision and um, he's really hungry to sort of get that opportunity. So he's got a massive, re really good composure and smoothness around him. So yeah, definitely don't be surprised if, you know, it's not often that a rookie player will sort of step in and, um, you know, play that round one, but don't be surprised if, if that happens this year. Well, there is a spot to fill there with Ruffy just hanging out in the gym for the next uh hey, yeah, yeah, as I said, so. aggressive in rehab, I'm, I'm doing my best. <laughs> uh, lo lovely piece of play here from the, the white forwards. The first time they've gone inside 50 and Trent Bianco has ended up with a, a set shot 40 out. Hits the post. And he's hit the post. It's hard to do here, hit the post. There's a lot of wind going around. I feel like um, they're big posts here, actually. I feel like I hit them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, a little bit of a really great movement out of the back line there from Scott Pendlebury, as he often does, just made time stand still and look like he had all the time Go on, in the say world. It. But Smooth move, I've got Pendlebury. He's very, very... <laughs> st I've heard that... So much time. I've, yeah, I've heard that mentioned before. But apparently uh, he has a basketball background or something. Uh, did he? <laughs> Played a bit, I think. I think so, yeah. yeah something like that. Yeah, I think he taught Paddy Mills. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, just an observation I, I'm really enjoying. Um, it's good to see the, the black number 23 out there. I just, just realised that that's being worn tonight. Jack oh. Madgen down back Jack for Madgen. the black team. So he's channelling a bit of bit of roughy. Yeah, the Dower defender tonight, I <laughs> yeah. think. Um, well, here we go. The black team, they've got to work it out this time because they coughed it up. But this time, they've just got that little kick. That's a nice bit of composure. Now they can reset. Um, now, Ruba, Pendlebury, the man I just mentioned, down back. A bit of a different role for him this year? Yeah, a role that um, in his presser, was it yesterday or the day before, he was saying he's been pretty keen to slot back there for a while now. Um, and obviously, him going back there, as we said, brings a bit of a smoothness and a calm head back to the back line. Not that Ruffy isn't that, um, but it gives opportunity as well for, you know, Johnny Noble. He's been training on the wing um, sort of half-half this preseason. So uh, massive opportunity for him to be pushed up onto the wing and um, his smooth, school, smooth skills to be used out in a bit of space. Well, and this is the time too, Ruffy, where we will probably throw the magnets around a little bit tonight and, and give a, a few different players a, a run in different positions. Um, Obviously, those yeah, half-back spots, the wing, move it around a little bit. What are you expecting to see? I wouldn't be surprised to see Nick Dacos spend a little bit of time at half-back, maybe in that um, that Pendlebury um, crisp sort mm -hmm. of role. And, and those those three might uh, yeah spend or well, mix their time between um, half-back and on-ball. Um, have been doing a bit of work with, with the three of them through um, pre-season. Jack Ginneman just taking a 
a nice little chest mark. We don't practice a chest mark too often, but that was a nice one. Um, well, on the 45 degree angle, you might want to call this one home, Glenno. Well, I was very impressed by the uh, the ball movement of the black team there. Started with um, Ash Johnson, an another player who obviously joined us last year. Haven't seen a lot of him yet, but he, he looks like he's a... We talk about smooth movers. He looks like he's got all the attributes to be an amazing footballer. Yeah, got a great athletic profile. Um, really, really springy, really quick. Um, I'm sure we'll... Um, certainly try to take the occasional hanger. Um, he gets up nice and high and launches at the footy. So one that, yeah, we're, we're all excited to see. Hopefully um, we're the black and white stripes for the first time this year. Well, Jack Ginnaman just pulled that to the left. I think there's a little bit of right to left breeze out there tonight, looking at the uh, the trees. And um, it's going to be tricky conditions out here because it's uh, quite blowy. So it's obviously, it's the other thing about training here, Ruffy, very different to every game that you play of AFL you're in a stadium yet you, you're training out here where it's a, it's a lot more exposed does it do you find that, that you have to alter the way you, you you know from training to the way you play obviously there's a lot more intensity when you run out there for a game but does it does, is it a factor when you're out here no one I've really spent too much time thinking about there you go. So oh, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to think uh, about it no I don't I don't think so I think <clears> as as with we, we try and train at a level that is harder than, than what we play at. Mm -hmm. So that then when we, we step back into games, it feels a little bit easier and, and we're really well prepared. Um, and it's probably a similar thing really with um, with the conditions. You train out here in the the, the, the wind and the rain and um, obviously you, you can still be rain affected on the weekend. But as you said, in stadiums, you're, you're, not t you're generally not as windy. Um, so things are a little bit easier out there um, on the G or definitely at, uh, at Eddie Hud. Is that what they're calling it again this year? Or have we got a... Marvel, Marvel. Marvel, Marvel, Marvel Stadium. Yeah, Marvel. Sorry, Marvel. Apologies. Spider-Man. Spider-Man delivered the ball. Apologies, Chris uh, For one of the, the Renegades games there, uh, not too long ago. So, oh, really? yeah, we'll see if we, what we can organise. Maybe for instead one of, of the centre bounce, we could have the centre drop, and he could just drop it, come in. down, and just let it go. Um, now, Ruba, coming back to your analysis here, one of the all-time pickups for the Pies in the off-season was a man by the name of Pat Lipinski. Your old. Uh, your old teammate from, um, from the Western Bulldogs. Um, uh, Ruba, what can you tell us about uh, Pat Lipinski? And, and, and then we'll see what Ruffy's got to say. Well, uh, I think Madge summed it up um, in one of the Instagram videos for Pies that they picked him up for a bag of chips, which was a pretty good analysis by Madge. But, um, yeah, I think he's all the boys absolutely already love him. He's slotted in really well and in contention for the best looking I've heard from a few of the boys at the club. Oh, I don't I mean, think it's competition, to be honest. <laughs> no, really. Oh, really? I thought I'd think you'd be up oh, there, Ruff. Thanks, thanks, yeah. He's that um, far ahead already, isn't he? Yeah, that's it. But, yeah, no, apparently he's had no problems getting his hands on the ball and just has a really good natural ability to, I guess, burst through congestion and um, find the goals as well. And, Ruffy, how rapt are you that he found his way to the Holden Centre? Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a really impressive kid. Um, Melbourne boy, um, really high-class education. Um, but he's, like Ruby said, he stepped in. Um, and he's he basically won the or he did win the time trial um, I think on day one and his work rate uh, and his, his silky skills are, are really impressive and I mean I know the dogs have got a, a really quality midfield but he's the sort of player that I honestly can't believe wasn't uh, wasn't playing AFL last year so we're up to have him and he he will really make an impact and Rube on the on the scale of handsome men at the club where do you think he sits just we're gonna need to talk about the important stuff are we talking of Ruffy, Ruffy up the top and Ruffy Trey Rusco the down the bottom. Is that the is that the <laughs> scale we're going with? You really wanted to. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, don't you worry. There's the so, going to be so many opportunities tonight. You went early. Oh. With yeah. You. Um. Oh, look, he's not bad. He's not. Bad. He goes all right, but I think um, you know, it's about the footy. Yeah. It's about what they deliver on game day, and um, if he's as promising as, you know, Ruffy's talking him up to be, then I think Pies are in uh, held in good stead. I'll tell you another guy who goes all right, and that is number 41 for the Pies, Brody Mycheck. A man who Gary Lyon described not that long ago as probably the best value for money footballer in the comp. He just gets the job done every week. And He's we, actually really highly paid, Glenn, so oh, right, okay. incorrect, but anyway. <laughs> but, um, you know, you, you, we talk about bags of chips and steak knives somewhere. There's a guy that, you know, we was all very good, very consistent for a long time at VFL and came in um, in 2018 and just slotted straight into the AFL system and 
he's been one of the most consistent players we've had over the last you know three and a bit years. Absolutely. You speak about consistency. We've just seen two things that will shock nobody. Brody Mychek's knocked one over from outside 50. Just before that, Braden Maynard gave away a 50 metre for <laughs> a goal. So, <laughs> as expected, almost yeah. scripted. But yeah, there you go. He's got the ball back and he'll be angry about that one, Bruzzy. He'll be wanting to make up for it. Um, are you liking the intensity, Ruff? It's, um, it, it doesn't look like a, a, a sort of a, just a bit of fluffy training. They look like they're having a, a, a bit of a crack out here and they're taking it seriously. Yeah, absolutely. It was never going to be fluffy. I mean, there's, there's round one spots on the line in just a couple of weeks' time. Um, what I'm enjoying is that I don't actually know what the score is. I'm not keeping up, but there's been some goals kicked early doors, but both teams have, um, have been able to score when they've ventured inside 50. So um, obviously that's something we need, needed to improve was our ability to kick goals and good to see both teams doing so early. Um, that was it? Nice contested uh, effort out there with someone parked right under the ball. That was big Aiden Begg. A big Aiden Begg, number 39. Mid-season draft last year, big pickup. So along with Ash Johnson, a couple of guys. There's out working everyone. Good to see him get his hands on the footy. Wearing the number one jumper too, like straight into the club, into the number one jumper. That's, uh, you know, you got to be able to back it up. Well, he's the most the most handsome bloke and that's how we, uh, <laughs> that's how we sort the numbers out, I think. <laughs> Now you mentioned um, Braden Maynard, Ruffy. What's your what's your uh, intel on on the man, Ruba? Oh, look. Obviously, the last three years he's pretty much solidified himself as one of the best and toughest defenders in the comp. Um, and so been ripped off for an All Australian um, spot as well. Yeah, that's it. Um, but yeah, obviously he's ready to sort of jump into that midfield, particularly with Pendles going into the back line as well. Um, that bit of a bigger body into the midfield. So don't be surprised if you see him in there a fair bit this year and probably not, you know, for a whole quarter and all that, but for short spurts, definitely. And just another goal to the black side there, Ruffy. Yeah, I think that was Jaden Booth, one of the uh, VFL listed players, just knocked one over. And really nice finish. This is probably going to be the year where you really might have to rely on some of your VFL players with everything that's, that's happening with COVID. We, I think that we're seriously looking at being able to just continue on at all costs. And, and some of these, these VFL listed players may get an opportunity throughout the season. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, the, the women's season we've already seen has been so heavily impacted um, by COVID. Um, teams obviously not being able to even get their 16 required AFL listed and, and top up players out there. Um, so similar things may happen. Um, obviously, we've got bigger lists in the AFL, um, which, which will make things a little bit easier. But um, expect the unexpected, I think, is going to be the um, kind of the, the story of the year. And um, probably not used to seeing, um, he just, Aiden Begg just kicked a goal and he's straight into the ruck. Obviously, with, with no Brody Grundy out there tonight, that means that, you know, most of the ruck is going to fall to Darcy Cameron and to Mason Cox. So... We'll probably have to mix it up a little bit in the centre. <laughs> there we go. We talk about guys having a crack. Jamie Elliott just went straight for uh, Brody Mychek there, and he was not holding back at all. Uh, the other ruckman that's out there at the moment, Glenn, that people may not recognise wearing the white long sleeves is Michael Hartley, who's um, former VFL, I believe, maybe AFL um, rookie here at the at the Pies, but spent a bit of time at uh, both Essendon and Hawthorne. Um, it's, has been listed uh, for our VFL squad this year as well. There we go. Well, we are about to be joined very shortly by a special guest, but I'm not going to ruin it. But, um, this is going to be, we're just, we're about to go up a level soon. He'll so, introduce so himself, get, really. Exactly. In get third it, person. Get excited, <laughs> everyone at home, because it's about... Can we actually do that? Can we, can we let him introduce himself? Give him <laughs> <a> big... <laughs> don't, sh it's quiet in the background, don't, don't give it away. But um, we'll uh, be just ramping things up very shortly. Umpire's picked out a free kick there, and it's uh, looks like the black team are going to be uh, loading up again. Johnny High Noble. tackle there on John Noble. He's actually hard to tackle, very low to the ground, as people would observe. <laughs> He's uh, low to the ground, but very fast. Very fast. And uh, we've got a free kick to Darcy Moore, and he's going to be loading it up and bringing it out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, everybody joining us at home, this is a very special moment. Uh, for everyone, uh, one of the greatest players to ever pull on the number 35. And, um, and actually the first person that to, to wear the number 35 under the, uh, the Presti Mantra when we introduced that to the club. None other than the Prince of Perth, Fazzy Boy, Alex Pasolo. Welcome, Faz. That is one of the best things I think we've done for the introduction. So it's yes. So good to be here, guys. Such a great energy. 
feel like quite nostalgic at some point. So, um, no, nah, I really love to be here. And, um, and you're doing a bit of pies in the pub action over in the glass yeah. house. So who have you got in there with you? Well, I was very starstruck. I had just then I had on the panel, I had, um, I had Nick Maxwell, Luke Ball, Tony Shaw, Tuck, Tuck and Lockyer. Lockyer. Yep. Um, and it was it was really great. Everyone's really up and about. Everyone's on like a bit of a different journey at the moment, which is fantastic. Max is obviously still really heavily involved with the club. We don't, um, know, we don't know what Maxi does at the club. Well, that's why, that's why I had to ask him. And you know what? His answer was so vague, I still don't know either. <laughs> no one knows what Maxi I does. I think he kind of floats around, slaps blokes on the asses, and kind of gets on with it. I don't there's much All to right. it. We're on a, we're on a PG slot oh, here. It's not yet 6 o'clock, Fazzy. So let's try and keep it clean. <laughs> now, uh, now, now, actually, now, before we continue, are you... Are there's you Jamie. Oh, geez, move. Look how gorgeous he is, the way he moves. Oh. But um, now, are you still referring to yourself in the third person? Does Fazzy still talk about more, Fazzy... Mate. Um, in my older age, I've humbled a little bit, so there's much, there's much less of that. But sometimes, if you get me on a roll, like if I have another beer downstairs, I might, I might get up yeah. there. But yeah. thanks for asking, that, Glenn. You've, you've tried, Carlton will do that to you. Though. Carlton, it'll just, it'll yeah. actually just, it's just really, real, really, real, real reality that, check. Carlton was nothing more than a reality check. That's exactly, <laughs> what it was. That's exactly what it was. And what is Fazzy doing? Uh, did I hear it? There's a rumor going around that you're off the market. You're, you're engaged. Yeah, is that, yeah, is that, engaged. I, I dropped a knee. I dropped an E in July this year. I um I went up to Queensland and I was on Trinity Beach and I was on the overlooking the water and I got an E and yeah, very happily engaged. And you got a yes. I got a yes, unbelievably. Were you nervous? I, I mate, honestly, I, I was like I was like, What's he be nervous about? Like, of course you're gonna say yes. But I was <laughs> I was shitting myself. Oh, in right, the again, we're on oh, slot. Yes, thank you. I was I was honestly I was absolutely um, worried. I was so worried. Yeah, I was yeah. incredibly shaky. But um, but it all went well, and it was really great. That's great. So yeah. a couple of little fuzzies running it around soon. Potentially, maybe. maybe. Who knows? I'm getting married in December. Right. So, so we'll we'll, um, we'll see how we go. We'll start thinking about we'll start potential in the new year. Uh, father son or father daughter prospects Correct. for the Correct. pies. Correct. Uh, well, well, what is it? Is it? I played 100 games. That's is that, you, yeah. That's qualified. That yeah. Perfect. Yeah. How many did you play at Carlton? Two, three. Right. Yeah. Two unbelievable games. <laughs> unbelievable, yeah. Um, now, what do you think of our recruit who's got the ball in his hands now, Paddy Lipinski? Unbelievable. And he's um, wearing the great number too, which is fantastic. Number, number one. Mm, which yeah. is great. No, no, he's looking really good and he's obviously showing some signs early, which is great. He was a high draft pick, wasn't he? What number was he? I'm not sure. Originally rough. Do you remember where he Put went in the draft originally? Spot. I don't actually go back through the, the draft annals and, and work it out. I've got no idea. He could... I feel, I feel like he was a, a first rounder, but I'm not too sure. Doesn't always equate to a good footballer. Look at Swanee. Swanee was picked 50 something, I think, and correct. One of the greatest. I was, I was, um, I was picked 45. I yeah. slipped through. Well, just ask Nick I'll Maxwell. He was a rookie, <laughs> believe it or not. I'll yeah. beat you. I was picked 147 in the first <laughs> round. <laughs> I beat you all. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, there was about 220 girls that drafted first, that year. That was first yeah, first, first year. year. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, there you go. Do you reckon you lived up to that so far? Oh, not too sure. Not too sure. It took me five years to do what anything, so. How would you live up to pick 147? Hard to do. Oh, very hard to do. Rock up the yeah. yeah, that's it. I reckon you should wear it on your back next year. You reckon? You wear 147. 147. It's a big number. But uh, the listeners here, I'm guessing, are, are watching the game. They are watching. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the program. <laughs> no, it's marvellous to have well, you along. I was going to make a video. I was like, well, what's going on? Just the know? screen in front of us. There's, no, there's good. no camera on us. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's good. No. They can't see me. Um, and uh, so what's 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 the world of Fazzy looking like? You uh, working? You're getting in the... I know you're a keen surfer. I've seen you, uh, you, seen you dob sometimes. dominate out at Boobs. I've never dominated, but I, 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 um, I feel like my surfing's getting worse. Honestly, every time I get in the water, I feel like I'm getting worse and worse. Right, you just probably need to do it more often. I know, correct. Yeah. No, no, no. It works really good. I'm working at um, City Power Power Corp, doing the um, health and well-being stuff there, looking yep. after all the lineys around Victoria, their physical and mental health, working with some really good people. Awesome. Um, learning a lot. Yeah, life's pretty good for me, mate, to be honest. Well, you're looking well. Thanks, and we're, mate. It's always good to have uh, some of the, the champions and true legends of the club back. Jack Ginevan has just absolutely finish. plucked one out of nowhere. So here we go. We say every year at these that things. That was a great finish. That was. We haven't given that the justice it deserves, have we? No, that was that a was huge a, finish. That was Is a very good up? goal. It was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. We've dropped a few unbelievables very early in the first uh, quarter. We're excited, mate. It's going to be a big 2022. <laughs> Um, down there. I was at um, I was at um, Jared Blair got married a couple of weekends ago, and um, we had a really good evening there. And there's a few boys out. Howie was there, um, Steele was out there. It was really good to see a couple of old blokes. We had a great night. I, really there was good. a guy that looked like Dale Thomas, but he he was quite a bit larger than <laughs> the, the Dale <laughs> Thomas I remember. Glenn. 
He's, 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 done, he's, he's still Daisy having, was there, and Daisy was good, and Daisy was happy, and Daisy was up and about. Really? He's yeah, on yeah. fire. He's just enjoying retirement. He looks time. like he's enjoying retirement <laughs> a lot. He's allowed to, though. Lead. He's allowed to. That's good. He's um, another true champion of the club, and um, we'll, have to, we'll have to get him back down here now, or if he's not too offended by, uh, by my comments. Can I um, just ask a quick question? Did, is this how long quarters go for? This feels uh, like it's been going on for about an hour. It's because <laughs> it's because we're, we're we're doing like a live stream. It feels like it's longer. Right. It's actually only been five and a half minutes. Five and a half. <laughs> no, it's not really. That's a lot of goals in five and a half minutes. <laughs> it is. How are you going, Ruffy? So what's going? On? You're injured at the moment. Yeah, mate. I'll just, uh, I'll just we've gone we through this. Yeah. Yeah. We can go again if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> we can catch up on this later. <laughs> As I said, well, welcome to the program. Uh, good, good to know. I'm sure um, we've already spoken about that. What we did speak about earlier too is the fact that. Whenever we have these pre-season hit-outs, there's always a couple of guys that, that really want to push for their spot in the 22 that have a red-hot crack. Yeah. Who are some of the guys that you remember over the journey that it got to the pre-season hit-out and you thought, I do not want to get in that guy's way because he might kill me? Oh, it was just, it was very much like, you know, especially once you got a bit older, you know, the young boys were going really hard. But old guys like, um, guys like, I remember training, guy, training with guys like Taylor Adams and Jordy Degoe and Jack Chris and these guys go bullet a gate all the time. And I was never really like that. Probably probably just should have been. You just like to save yourself for the uh, real stuff. Just like, I don't know. I probably didn't have that real competitive bone in me like those blokes do. But they just bullet a gate all the time. And I was always petrified mm. about being around them on the training track. Yeah. But hence why they're all three of them are incredibly good players. And here's Taylor Adams as we speak. Got the ball now. And here's Nick Dacos. Just, he uh, makes it look pretty easy, doesn't he? He's, um, yeah, he's going to be a good player, isn't he? I think... There's, there's, there's strong rumour to suggest that he will be. Are we going to talk about Mason Cox's glasses? We mentioned that earlier yeah, we as well. Have, what's your thoughts, though? Oh, it's unbelievable. So I didn't, re I, I didn't realise. So he's, he's got, like, he keeps getting poked in the eye or something like that or something has to come. Something's yeah, happening. his contacts keep coming out. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, he has had some pretty... And he can't get the 2020, the old laser? No, I think he's, he had, I think he's had... They've tried. I think he's had he, seven operations yeah. or something in the last couple of years. I, so, I think yeah. he's had some very serious... Um, Oh, issues or like this is what you want, isn't it? Strolling to the open go. goal. But Will Kelly. There it is. Well, Will Kelly. Bang. Very nice. Ah, uh, Craig Kelly's son. Yes, big Ned. Mm. Um, so let's. Uh, well, obviously, he came into his first game. Will Kelly kicked a goal, I think, with his first mm. kick of the footy, and you were like, "This yeah, is fantastic." Right, yeah. And then, unfortunately, got injured in the same game and missed a fair chunk of footy. So let's say, uh, hope that that's a, a sign of uh, more to come. So I think. Looks like we've got the end of the first quarter, so I think it's uh, it's pretty even out there at the There's moment. A scoreboard. So There's a scoreboard? the scoreboard's yeah. right there, but we can't see it. Oh, it is. So that's perfect, isn't it? Well, uh, Easy to well, call. Fazzy, can, can I ask what the teams are? Are they like even teams, or have they gone a bit of a ones v twos? What have they gone with? No, like, they've gone. They've they've they're having a look. It's pretty even. It's right. pretty even. Okay. So it's well, uh, but the teams will probably change up as the. Uh, as the game goes okay. on, there might be a few blokes. The Intra Club last year was a good one. We had City versus Country. I'm oh, a little bit disappointed awesome. we haven't gone with that again. It was one of the one of the great Intra Clubs. I reckon Country would have won. Or Country should have won. Oh, they Yeah, we were up late and just gave up the last couple of goals. Ah, but interesting. There's really something on the line when you go City versus I, Country. I remember because I, I was I'm from WA originally. I remember we were playing State 18s, and there was well, for whatever reason this idea that Vic Country were very intimidating because like boys from the country you know like that was always intimidating i don't know if that's true but i always was always a bit intimidated by vic country how are you feeling yeah. now mate i'm a big country boy I, I, I'm hence why i'm a little bit nervous yeah. Yeah, they, just, <laughs> they just breed them tough they do well i think so big hands. or is that just a stereotype i don't know absolutely no, they can't just, confirm yeah. stereotype. <laughs> i think they're just a little yeah. bit more resilient than, than the city folk but uh, no now Faz, you might have to get back down to your party so thanks for joining us thanks so much for having me guys it's an absolute pleasure right. been really nostalgic up here it's good to see you <laughs> Welcome back. No. Anytime, Fazzy. Lovely to have you along. Thanks, can guys. we get you? Can we? Will we see you at a Pies game this yeah, year? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, no, absolutely. We'll you, I think we should just have like Fazzy's lounge. Oh Jesus! Maybe you could have. I think you're pushing it, but I like it. I like the headband. I think we have to do something mm. here this oh, year. I'm going to go turn it on downstairs. All right. <laughs> there All you the go. best. Thank you very much, everyone. Alex for solo. One of the the all-time greats. But, um, We're just going through the, re the some some highlights here, um, and some of the goal scoring has been really special the big texan couldn't quite get his fingers on that one well that looked touched. knocked it over no, we should have no. reviewed that we've got to we've got to go umpire on the lawn we love our umpires <laughs> well um, um this is the one have a look at this finish jack this is he's jack a natural right footer have a look at this that is unbelievable as fazzy would say mm. thanks alex i think the wind had a lot to do with that one actually we're talking about raw talent i reckon 
Nah, we'll, we'll pump him up, Jack Denivan. Um, he's had a good quarter there. He had that, that lovely finish on the left. He had the, the goal assist to Tyler Brown. He's, he's done well early. Yeah, Scoot had nothing but great things to say about um, Jack Denivan. He um, apparently has had a massive pre-season and his ability to pressure the contest has been, you know, he's reaping the, the rewards now and you can sort of see it in that first quarter. And um, Scoot actually said he's got one of the best IQs and the highest yeah. IQ, footy IQs in the team, which is so impressive for a, a young fella. So definitely expect to see a bit more AFL opportunity from him this, this and he year. he just loves his footy too, which is, which is really good to see from a young guy. He can't get enough. He comes in and watches all the, the oppo vision with the, the strategy guys and, um, yeah, really soaks it all in. So he's, uh, he's got a, a bright future ahead of him, hopefully, young Jack. Well, pretty even uh, start to the game for, uh, for both the sides here on our first intra-club hit out. So um, we're going to go to a little break. I'm just going to throw to a little bit of colour and you can check out what's happening down here. Um, and if you do want to get down for the jumper presentation that will be happening after the game, so we've got our dress presentation for the SSN uh, Magpies for netball. Um, and then also we'll have our jumper presentation for our 2022 AFL list. So we're going to take a little break and we'll be back shortly. All right, good evening everyone and welcome back to the Pies Hot Summer club intra club family day down here at the holden center we are into our second quarter of three 25 minute quarters tonight um, intra club played between just two of the teams we've got the black team and the white team pretty even start and some really good footy happening already big shout out to our awesome sponsors vrgf who are sponsoring this evening of course that is the victorian responsible gambling foundation so uh, another red hot start here um, from both teams, taking it very seriously, and I'm not sure what shorts Tyler, uh, sorry, Callum Brown has got going on there, and something with a little bit of red in them. But we, uh, Ash Johnson is going to line up for a contested mark here. It's a lovely arm chop from the defender there. We love to see that. Uh, that was Charlie Dean, your man. My man. He's uh, starting really well. Ollie Henry, what are we going to see from him this year, Ruffy? He he burst onto the scene last year, got some early games, and then come back after missing a bit of footy throughout the year. Um, and finished really strong. I think we're going to see more of the same. Had a, a great summer. Um, another one of the players that I believe Ruby's uh, got some insight on from Scott Selwood. Yeah, not too much. Just um, apparently he's been working really hard on his weapons over the off-season mm. and is walking around the place with a little bit of confidence, which is good to see. Obviously, probably got those uh, first-year jitters out of the way. It can be a bit daunting coming in and not really sort of knowing where your spot is, but um, apparently he's been working really hard to sort of understand the game plan and um, where his skill set fits into that as well. Uh, it's always that the added pressure of, of, of being a high draft pick. Already got a brother in the system, and, and obviously we were looking for players to, to really come in and, and have an impact early, so there was that pressure. And there's Mason Cox taking a very nice grab with the glasses on. They're working. They are. And um, Arlo Draper, number 19, he's just, the ball's just gone out there, but what do we know about this young man, Ruba? Yeah, picked up at uh, pick 45. I think it was predicted to go a little bit higher, so slipped through and um, came across with a couple of his other South Australian buddies with Harvey Harrison and Cooper Murley, which um, it's pretty helpful for the young kids, you know, moving across. Um, I know as a, you know, WA girl moving across when I was 18, I would have, I had Emma King who was a bit older, but it would have been great to have a few younger people move across with me. So I'm sure that's helped him settle in pretty early. And, and I know Grundy's sort of taken him under his wing as another South Australian, which is great. Um, but yeah, real, real versatile player and um, will probably mainly play on the wing, but um, has really great awareness through traffic and um, rarely looks rushed. So hopefully uh, he, he just needs to work in his tank, get that up to AFL standard, but um, pretty promising signs. Um, pretty happy that he slipped all the way through to us there, Ruffy. Absolutely. He's, I was just going to say, he's actually surprisingly big. If you get a chance to have a look at him standing on the wing next to a, a side bottom or, or the like, he's quite a big frame. Um, so I, I've got the feeling that he might start on a wing, but then uh, potentially could move inside um, as an inside mid down the, down the track a little bit. Um, Charlie Dean playing a really nice hand down back there. He's... Um he looks like a very solid player. Looks like he's going to just slot straight in for us there, Ruff. Yeah, I really hope so. Um, he's, um, as Ruby said before, he's first in, last out. Loves to, to get to work with the, the development coaches and um, he's, my ears are going to fall off soon enough with him asking questions and <laughs> asking to do a little bit of extra work on one-on-ones or, or whatever it is. But that's what you love to see from a, a young player who's, who's come into the system and obviously um, played some really good VFL football but um, knows that he's got a step his game up again to take to the next level and, and he's already uh, really making ground on doing so. 
Well, imagine just taking the ball out there wearing the great number 23. Uh, Jumper looks a bit big on him. It does. Mm. It's a little bit baggy. Mm. But um, I'll tell you what, another guy it is great to see back out there who we, we really missed at stages through last year was, was Jeremy Howe. Um, he looks like he's had a really nice pre-season rough. Yeah, he has. Uh, it's, it's great to see him fully fit. Um, obviously had his uh, trouble with his knee and then, and then hamstring um, across the last couple of seasons. Um, but he is fighting fit now and um, he's, he's a great leader down back and um, has, has given a lot of support to both the young guys and the, the senior guys alike. So fingers crossed we can um, see both him and, and Darcy, Darcy Moore playing uh, a lot of games together this year and I'm sure both will, will do great things. A couple yeah. more Mark of the Year noms this year, you reckon? Has he won one? No, he's had a lot of noms. <laughs> he's definitely had a second that he thought he'd he got won. He signed up. a lot of cards that year. and then Yeah, he got, he oh, got he, absolutely right. stitched somebody, up on one. Somebody won it that year, and you could see they were actually stunned that they won it instead yeah. of him. Was that Danaher? It could, have been, yeah, it could have been the Danaher yes, year. Yes, it was the Danaher year. But, um, Which was an extraordinary grab, but any other year, I reckon, uh, well, to be honest, any other week, Jeremy could win the, uh, the mark of the year. Well, I think that's the thing with Howie. He's... He does one of those nearly every week. Does it make so. it less spectacular, maybe? Well, it used to be like, oh, he's done it again. I think, well, he'd be breathing a sigh of relief there because he, he earned a, a free kick for, for putting himself right in front of the pack there, Howie, and then uh, coughed it up. But Ollie Henry just uh, just faded that one across goal. So he'd be breathing a bit of a sigh of relief. But it, look, I think the the expectations are so high with Howie that he, he just does that every week. He's just got that phenomenal spring. But... Um, and Mason Cox, that's what we like to see. The Another big, big contested his, grab, we like that. Getting his hands on the ball and building that confidence heading into the season. Um, Caleb Poulter, number 24, burst onto the scene last year. We were really impressed with the way he went about it, Ruffy. Another guy that can play up on the a wing and, and quite a versatile player for us. What are you hoping to see from him this season? Yeah, he's a lovely left footer. For some reason, left footers are just better players. I don't know what it is, but he, um, he'll take his game to another level. He's, he's spent a heap of time in the gym. Um, a lot of those young guys have one that we haven't spoken about yet, but that uh, he's, he's really tight with uh, with Pult with Pult's is is uh, Reef McInnes. Um, put a lot of size on, but maintained his tank, and he'll be a bit of a bit of an inside bull, I think, when he uh, when he gets his crack at it. Reef was actually working with a running coach in the off season, I think. Um, you know, getting his running form right and building his tank, and um, yeah, obviously he had a pretty interrupted year last year, didn't get a full crack at it. Um, so yeah, hopefully big things from him this year. Yeah, really exciting young player. Looks like he's doing all the right stuff um, behind the scenes to give himself the best opportunity. Yeah, he is. He's one of those, as Ruby said, he, he got injured early last year, had a Cindy, which is a bit of a, a buzz injury at the moment, the syndesmosis ankle injury, which is a pretty tough one to come back from and um, and dominate straight away. So he, um, I actually did a lot of work with him over the over the off-season. And um, I don't know why I keep running with little blokes. What are <laughs> the big blokes wrong with? Silly. Silly. Well, we're going to see the ball heading back down there for the uh, <coughs> the black team. A, uh, John Noble running with the uh, white underskins top. I'm not sure that helps with his complexion. I'm not sure that's the I think that's, a bit, right of, I think that's a bit of rough head inspo, though. Yeah, there's, there's a few of the boys be. now that rock the, the long sleeve. Bit of sun um, protection. You, you've got a little bit of colour like, to you, though. Like, you've got a bit of tan. So that's generous. That's <laughs> very generous. Compared to Noble, obviously. <laughs> Black team going back inside 50. Mason under it. Couldn't hang on that time. So, Ruffy, what's been the main focus for the, the side in the off-season? Obviously, you know, with the new coaching staff that we've talked about, what do you what do you think Pies fans are going to see this year? When, well, I can't when, really tell you, Glenn, because that's well, without away giving the game. Away, <laughs> without giving away too much, what, what's sort of been the focus for us? Um, well, a lot of it's been sort of connecting with our past and, and connecting with our present. So getting to know the history of the club better, um, and, and getting to know, to know and connect with there's oh, big okay. mace has just plucked on. That's his third contested mark for the quarter. So the goggles, absolutely doing their job right now. Um, yeah, connecting with each other and um, obviously teams that are more connected and have more shared experience. I say obviously, maybe it's not that obvious. Can um, can generally perform better. So we spent a lot of time on that. And, and in terms of our on field, our on field work, we want to we want to take more territory. We want to be a, a forward half team and. Um, we want to take the game, take the game forward more, and give our forwards more of a chance, which is something we haven't been able to do enough of the past few seasons. A lovely finish from the the big fella, the big Texan. Um, 
So, yeah, hopefully Magpies fans will, will see us scoring more. We've been uh, reliant on our defence probably too much the last couple of years. So. And, Ralph, tell us, um, how much of what the AFLW girls have taught you over the last two years will you implement into your game this year? Um, what the AFLW <laughs> girls have taught me? No, I've learned a lot from the AFLW girls. Um, it's been... One, I, in, I really, one in particular? Uh, yeah, Stacey Livingston. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I love, I love being involved with the women's program. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I think the you'd probably correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, I think the girls enjoy having me down there and um, having some AFL experience come in and, and just help the program out. So I love, uh, love getting my hands dirty down there and um, in looking forward to the, the trip down to Hobart this week. You missed out on your uh, good rap before the game started. We did, we did give you a good rap, but um, obviously oh, wouldn't God. tell you too much to your face. Need to fit oh, you through feel, the door at the end of the day. Feel free to go again. <laughs> now, and um, the general down back, well, now you've kind of filled that role, but um, Stacey Livingston uh, played up forward last week for the Magpies. So you, uh, you lost her out of defence, Ruffy. Yeah, well, I've taught the defenders too much, I think. They're, they're, they're our, our strongest line. Um, and now we're trying to, to influence the, the rest of the, the group a bit more. So um, we might see a little bit of Stacey um, at both ends and hopefully we can um, get her on the end of some, some inside 50s and kick a couple of goals. Love stacker. Just she's pretty handy, the old girl, isn't she? Very handy. Throw her anywhere. disappointing on the weekend. She broke her run of, I think she'd played like 30 games in a row, 100% game And time. it was only because of a corky yeah, she, she came off. Yeah, she knock and yeah. had to come oh, off the ground. So, yeah. Yeah. Time to trade her. We'll have to, we'll have to start <laughs> that run again, unfortunately, Saka. <laughs> well, I've told her she's not allowed to retire until I do, well, so hopefully she's got another seven years in her. That'll only take her to when she's, what, 40? And uh, who was that? Uh, was that Crispy? Who did, or Taylor Adams who has uh, just slotted one through from the black team. So I think they might be edging ahead. But every t you need those swing players in the team you need some it's nice to have people that can play forward and play back will kelly where do you see him slotting in this year ruffy and ruby what intel have you got on him um well he's been training as a key forward this year which i think he asked the coaches staff whether he could go down there and um that's sort of where he was feeling most comfortable and felt he could impact so um got a full pre-season under his belt which is great and um his ability to fight and scrap at contests has really gone noticed by the coaches so um, you know, hopefully he can sort of find a position up there for himself and insert himself in the team. Yeah, and for a guy who's 200 centimetres, super athletic, obviously provides a great contest in the air, but he's, his groundwork's really impressive too, Ruffy. Yeah, it is. He's another one with an athletic profile that I'd kill for. He's, like you said, he's, he's big, he's quick, he's fit, um, and, and he can generally outwork key defenders um, really nicely. But the other one I think you'll see spending time at the, the opposite end of the ground of what they did last year, is, and he is tonight, is, is Liam McMahon. Um, obviously with Mark Keane returning to Ireland we, we were a little bit short on key defenders um, and Liam's um, plying his trade now at the other end so hopefully there'll be an opportunity for, for him to, um, to step up and um, perform at AFL level this year as well and uh, there we go Will Hoskin Elliott with some beautiful delivery there into the forward line and Pat Lipinski will line up from probably 25 out on, a, on about a 45 umpire's going to bring them back now, we mentioned him earlier, Checkers, Mr. Reliable up forward. We recruited him as a backman. Is there ever going to be a day where he goes back to, to the back line, Ruffy? He, or is he having too was, much fun? There was a day when Josh Kennedy was absolutely kicking a bag on us <laughs> in 2020, and we went, Checkers, we need someone to try and stop this bloke. So it was only a brief stint. Um, but no, like, he's won the goal-kicking award the last three seasons, I believe. Um, so I think he's well and truly found his... He's spot up forward, and unless we have some in-game injuries and need to swing him back because of that, I think he's um, he's going to be a long-term forward for us. Yeah, it's always um, it's a lot tougher. It's, it's more work being a backman, isn't it? The forwards get to do all the Larry stuff. You've just got to have thick skin. Well, there's the you, man. You have in. a look at him. Yeah, he, he does make it look pretty easy. Super strong, great contested mark there, and he's just loaded up straight into the four line. Ollie Henry flying from behind, and uh, he's butted up here as well, and he's given it over there to... Uh, that was Reef, and Reef has just sprayed it a little bit, but that's okay. It's uh, out of bounds, and Madge is, has just picked up a cheap one down back. Smart, that's how you yep. do a lot to get them. They're always, the easy ones. always see Madge run straight towards the boundary when someone's boosted it out on the full. There's big Krugs laying a tackle. Nathan Kruger joined us uh, over the, the off-season from the Cats. Big unit. Big unit, athletic unit. 
courageous unit, goes back with the flight hard. He's knocked me over a couple of times. And uh, and where do you see him sort of best slotting into the side? Oh, he'll, he'll spend his time forward. Yep. Um, he's uh, going to be another key forward option for us. Um, hopefully he can get on the end of a few tonight and um, stake his claims for that round one team. And is he a possibility to, to give you know the, the guys in the middle a bit of a chop out too? Can he can he slot into the ruck? Um, he's not wearing a shin guard out there tonight, so I don't think he's intending to spend any time um, in the middle tonight. I, I'm not too sure, to be honest. I haven't seen him um, in amongst it. We've got a few guys who can. Obviously, Darcy Cameron, Mason and Brody spending a, a lot of time in there. Um, I was just giving them a chop out every now and then uh, through the preseason before I went under the knife. So we've got a few options that can spend a bit of time in there if required. Can we see you in the ruck this season, Ralph? Ooh, I try to avoid it. You've got to be real tough to play in the ruck. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you did that. You played that role at the Western Bulldogs forward and and into the ruck. As the there is only one premiership ruckman at Collingwood Football Club. Right. Mm. Good to And good I'll let the boys know. know every <laughs> <time>. <laughs> um, I actually think it's one of the most difficult positions on the ground to play because you've got to have an impact. You've got to, you know, put all that work in up forward, you know, try and create as many opportunities for, you, for your side. You're up and down the ground contesting and then you go into the ruck often slightly undersized and then you have to compete again and it's it's you probably feel like a hamster on the wheel and you just you don't get to well yeah and there's also no other position on the ground where you can literally use your knees as a weapon it's and it's perfectly legal mm. um so you, you do you've got to be brave you've got to be tough um, and you've got to be able to work hard it's you're, you're involved in 90 stoppages a, a, a game so there's at least 90 wrestles you're involved in and it's um it is hard work and, and it's not celebrated enough i don't think like brody the work that brody grundy's been able to do here for the the last four or five years has been phenomenal. Yeah, he is an absolute beast, Brody, and he works so hard off the off the field to make sure he's ready every week, and he uh, he certainly gives his all. Looking Look. primed for a good season this year as well, I think. Looking um, fit and fire and to go, so that's good. Hopefully, back to his best and um, making the rucks chase him around the ground, beating him to each stoppage. Well, and just one of the all-time nice guys here at the club too. Very just nice, a, just a, very nice man. Just a big. Big sweetheart, isn't he? Yeah, he, made, he he really helped me transition into the club and, and make me feel comfortable early days. He spent a lot of time just catching up with me and sort of giving me the lay of the land. So um, nothing but respect for, for the big fella. And um, Rubes, you've done a little bit of homework on uh, the man wearing the 35. Obviously, that's, that's the jumper that our highest draft pick that comes into the club is given each year off the back of um, the legacy created by Simon Prestigiacomo, who gave up his spot in the 2010 grand final um so that's obviously part given to you know the, the highest pick each year when they come into the club and they work for one year but the number 35 this year is nick dacos and a jumper also made famous by his father peter dacos one of my all-time favorite footballers growing up um you've done a bit of work on nick uh, a bit of homework on nick uh, yeah well the coaches there's not much that hasn't been said about nick i think um he was in the discussions about eight months before he was drafted every week there was posts going off about him and um i reckon he'll be living up to the hype as well he you know he got the first clearance of the game out of the midfield and um just looks like a ready-made afl player and um apparently is you know his leadership is just amazing out there he's not shy you know as a first year player it's not it's not uh all the time that you find a young kid who's happy to sort of lead the blokes out on the field and um use his voice but apparently does it really well and um yeah going to be some big things come out of him, which I'm sure everyone in, is expecting. Ruffy, what do you think it's like for a young kid like that to come in with, obviously, famous name. His dad was one of the greatest players to ever ever play for, for Collingwood. Um, he's, he's got Josh out there already. He's touted as, you know, a potential number one. He's got a documentary made about him. Exactly. It's pretty... Uh, how's he handled all that? Uh, water off a duck's back, Glenn. Really? He... Um, yeah, as Ruby said, like his, his on-field stuff speaks for itself, but off the field, he's, you don't often see a, a young bloke come in at 18 years old and, and be able to give give and take feedback from, from senior players um, on field and, and in the right way. Um, and that's something that he's, he's been able to do and he's, he's really earned the respect of the team um, in the roles that he's played, both through the midfield and, and down back through the summer. Um, and, and to answer your question, like I've, I've had this conversation with Darcy Moore as well, obviously, son of Peter. Not a bad player. Yep. Um, club champion. And I think to, to come in with a, a Hall of Fame father would, would be particularly difficult if you weren't a standout player through your, your junior football and, 
and walk into the club and, and clearly demonstrate in your first pre-season that, that you are going to be all things going well for you. Um, Injury-wise, a, a phenomenal player. So I think that's certainly helped Nick as well um, and probably Josh, that they're both highly skilled um, players that, that get a lot of the footy and, and will be fan favourites. Yeah, well, you saw the way he just worked that out with... Uh with Tyler Brown, another young player for Collingwood with a, a famous name. Of course, Gavin being a 1990 premiership player and former captain of the club. We've, we've got this amazing pedigree of these young guys that have, have had this connection with the club over a long time. But, you know, seeing the way they work the ball out there is fantastic. It gives the midfield, obviously, a couple more options of who we can rotate through. Um, and a couple of guys that we will probably hope to see this year spend a little bit more time in the midfield would be Jamie Elliott, one of them, who seems to really... We talked about the bigger guys in that role where they're trying to be, you know, key forward and then play, move into the midfield and play in the ruck. But one guy that seems to do that really well is Jamie and, and obviously Jordan Dugowie. But um, we're going to see more of um, Jamie Elliott playing through the midfield this year? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, they are just such ballistic players that they're incredibly difficult to defend out of stoppage and, and can create space where not many other players can. So when they get their hands on there um, and, and can do that and, and take the ball forward for us, that's, um, that holds us in really good stead. So I think you'll see a, a pretty consistent mix, particularly at centre bounds, which involves uh, one of those two guys that you just mentioned. And uh, how do you feel about having the, uh, the Rolls-Royce parked in the, uh, the back line this year? Oh, actually, it's, it's going to be a funny one for the, the Collingwood fans to keep an eye on this year is, is who takes the kickouts. I reckon there could be a couple of scraps looking for the footy uh, behind <laughs> the goals between Scott Pendlebury, Darcy Moore, Jeremy Howe, Braden Maynard, Jack Crisp at times. <laughs> There's going to be five of them standing in there and I'm going to be standing, hopefully, in the pocket, hoping that they kick it to me. So, um, just one to, one to keep your eyes on. Uh, it was a really smart play then by um, Ash Johnson. He just tapped the ball beautifully over to... Uh, to Mason Cox and he's butted up again. Some fancy uh, feet there. But um, there's one of the other father sons intercepting it half back, Darcy Moore. He's just a beautiful footballer to watch, Darcy Moore. It just almost looks effortless for him. Great grab there by Darcy Cameron. Do you think we'll see Darcy Moore sort of swinging forward like we did last year? Um, I don't believe so. He's kind of another one that to do that you're, you're kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul, I guess. <laughs> like he's such a strong um, or I mean, after the second round last year, he'd probably penciled himself into All-Australian at the end of the year, and if not for injury, um, would have would have worn the green jacket for a second time, in my mind, um, in a team that didn't win a lot of games, so obviously hard to do. Um, so I don't think we'll see too much of him up forward. Maybe one of those players that when the game, when we're a couple of points down with not long to go, he'll swing forward and hopefully pluck one and knock it over. I don't reckon there's too many better sights in football than a Darcy Moore with the ball tucked under his wing running up the he All tucked under his wing, <laughs> running up the wing. There you go. <laughs> He's beautiful to watch. Um, great goal there by Brody Majek. Free kick given away by the number 23, Jack Madgen, uh, who was absolutely filthy with the decision too. You don't often see people getting that upset during practice matches. If I were a betting man, I would bet that he gives away a 50-metre penalty for umpire abuse at some point tonight. Right, OK. Beautiful. It's not often that you see the number 23 at Collingwood, Collingwood getting too hot-headed. Yes. Oh, Lauren Butler's pretty... Yeah, pretty to be wild. fair, she is. <laughs> bit wild. The whiz? I've never heard her hardly say anything. No, I don't think so. Well, she's actually down the... She was... Or is going to be down the boundary doing uh, a bit of chatting to the crowd, which Throwing is interesting. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, how good is it to see this crowd uh, back at the Holden Centre and watching footy that is probably what i think we're all looking forward to uh in 2022 is having crowds back at the footy so uh, i think we've got a, just over 2,000 people here with us tonight so big thank you to uh everyone that's come down and, and for those joining us at home too um joshy dacos there just wearing the number three he's got what are they doing he's wearing isaac quainer's number they're just throwing it around a little bit roughy just to confuse us yeah absolutely absolutely the boys like to to, to change the jumper sizes up a little bit and try and work out what they're going to wear in, in game. So, um, Ollie Henry there just working the ball beautifully, but um, just fading a little bit, getting that through for a point. Well, here we go. This, is, this is the only kick in Jack Madden will get for the year because the boys will fight him for it. Make the most of it, Jack. This is, um, he, he's, he's, we need to lay off, Madge. He's I love Madge. Yep. 
But, Love um, him. Absolutely we don't, want to, we don't want to upset him before the season even starts. One of the hardest workers we've got at the footy club. Yeah. Always working on his game and, um, and and was rewarded for that last year by playing uh, a fair few senior games of footy and hopefully will again this year. Yeah, and good fella. Ripper. Yeah, absolutely. Ripper. Lovely man. Got married over the off-season. Wow. To his lovely, lovely wife, Heidi, um, up in Byron. Just the two of them snuck up there and tied the knot. Yeah, they kept it pretty... They did keep it really quiet, low key. They? Yeah, yeah. They, um, Heidi's a, from the US, um, I believe from Mississippi. Um, so the, her family obviously couldn't get out. And um, and just to, to, to be fair, I guess, Jack didn't really want his, not didn't want his family there, but just, <laughs> just, wanted, just, wanted, to, just wanted to ensure that things were fair. So they, um, yeah, 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 they snuck up and we've kept all, it really low key. We've all got an uncle that we don't want to invite to the wedding that has to come along. The drunk Yeah, the drunk <laughs> Yeah. There it is, Jack Ginneman's forward pressure. That able was, to intercept there. Oh, yeah, he's giving him a free front, kick away. That was front on contact there. Good he slowed the game down, though, so we don't mind it. Allows us to get set up defensively behind the ball. And there's still side bottom, just taking a nice contest, uh, contested mark there and off to Maynard. And Darcy Cameron between two players can't pluck that one, but they've got numbers at the ball here, the white team, and it's going to be all locked up, I think. Not long to go here in the second quarter. As we mentioned, we've got three quarters tonight, if you've just joined us. 25-minute uh, quarters uh, in this pre-season hit-out for the Pies. Black v. White. And uh, very even contest at this stage. And there's our man, Match. Worked himself into a beautiful spot there. Could see that the ball wasn't, um, wasn't going to land on its intended target. And just put himself in the right spot. So no matter what you say about him, Ruffy, he's, he's doing all the right things out there on the ground. And... Uh, your mate, Ruba, Trey Rusco, playing a bit down back. Yeah, I think he uh, found his feet down there last year, getting a few games, and um, just looks a bit more comfortable down there than he did up forward um, in his first year. So, uh, I mean, bright boots for a, what is he, th second, third year player now, pretty bright boots and not a great haircut, but um, we'll let that go. There's not many players where their mum is more famous than <laughs> them. But off the back of his video when he rang his mum to say that he was playing, he was getting his debut, that was one of the best video, phone call, FaceTimes, whatever I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, Jeez. and that, that is dead set what Fiona is like every <laughs> single time you're with her. That was not for show or anything. That was um, Fiona Rusco to a T. Well, uh, that brings an end to the second quarter here. And... Uh, Lots of hands on hips. Lots of guys sucking in the big ones. They look like they're... Uh, this is the hardest game you play for the year, Glenn. It is? Club. Yep. The first time you really... There's something different about it because you, you can do all the training in the world, but the first time you're actually competing and whacking into each other, um, it just really lifts the level and the, the fatigue will certainly kick in by the end of the third and into the fourth quarter. And, um, of course, we've got our um, first proper pre-season hitting come out, uh, coming up in uh, Morwell where we take on the Hawks in a couple of weeks. Um... What are, you, uh, what are you hoping to see there, Ruffy? It's, uh, we'll be sort of throwing the magnets around and trying a few new things, or do you think we'll go in sort of with a strong lineup and, and give ourselves a bit of a, uh, you know, a preview into what we're going to see for the rest of the yeah, year? Yeah, I would think we'll go in with a, a pretty strong lineup. I think we're playing six quarters. Um, so for the first uh, three or two or three quarters, I imagine we'll go in with a pretty strong lineup. And all we want to see is more of, the, more of what I was talking about before is that system and role um, being played. Um, again, it's not going to be about kicks, marks, handballs. There are going to be guys who, who get a lot of it and guys who don't. But as long as we're playing our, our system and um, in our roles within the system, it's going to be uh, going to be a tick. And, and of course, hopefully we can roll out a more well with a, with a W. All right. Well, we'll take a, a, just a little break here as we'll uh, we'll throw to some colour while the, uh, we're uh, preparing for the last quarter. So big thank you to everyone that has joined us. And if you're not far uh, from the Holden Centre, get down here because there is, there's plenty happening over the night. And we've got a great little crowd down here so we'll take a little bit a uh, little bit of a break we'll be back shortly with our presence so getting to know the history of the club better um and, and getting to know to know and connect with there's oh, big Coco. mace has just plucked on that's his third contested mark for the our present so getting to know the history of the club better um and, and getting to know 
to know and connect with. There's oh, Big Coco. Mace has just plucked on. That's his third contested mark for the day present. So getting to know the history of the club better um, and, and getting to know to know and connect with. There's oh, Big Coco. Mace has just plucked on. That's his third contested mark for Play the game forward more and give our forwards more of a chance, which is something we haven't been able to do enough of the past few seasons. Lovely finish from the, the big fella. The big Texan. Um, so, yeah, hopefully Magfo Magpies fans will, will see us scoring more. We've been a... Uh, Take the game forward more and give our forwards more of a chance, which is something we haven't been able to do enough of the past few seasons. A lovely finish from the, the big fella. The big Texan. Um, so, yeah, hopefully Magfo Magpies fans will, will see us scoring more. We've been a... Uh, Take the game forward more and give our forwards more of a chance, which is something we haven't been able to do enough of the past few seasons. A lovely finish from the, the big fella. The big Texan. Um, so, yeah, hopefully Magfo Magpies fans will, will see us scoring more. We've been a... Uh, at AFL level this year as well. And uh, there we go, Will Hoskin Elliott with some beautiful delivery there into the forward line. And Pat Lipinski will line up from probably 20 there by Darcy Cameron. Do you think we'll see Darcy more sort of swinging forward like we did last year? Um, I don't believe so. He's kind of another one that to do that a couple of points down with not long to go, he'll swing forward and hopefully pluck one and knock it over. I don't reckon there's too many better sights in football than a Darcy Moore with a ball tucked under his wing running up them. All right, welcome back everyone as we get our third and last quarter underway for our Hot Pies Summer Family Day Intra Club Black Team heading straight in. Jack Ginevan, who started off this game really well. Great, um, great little bit of uh, work up there and he's dished it off and they have got another goal. So Black Team, I think slightly ahead. Wasn't that just yeah. a lovely passage? Lipinski out of the middle, long kick inside 50 to Ginevan on the lead. Jack Ginevan, who Couldn't started quite take off the mark, this game really well. Who did he find that? Um, Will Hoskin Elliott, who was able great. to knock it over mm, deep in the pocket. Mm, lovely right. passage from the black team. It's what we like to see. Um, that Ginevan looking a little proppy after that one. He's looking a little bit proppy. He'll walk that off. Yeah. He's tough. Physio's getting out there. They'll give him the all clear and he'll be right to go. Well, white team, I reckon, with a little bit of work to do here. Do we know who was coaching which team? Was Scoot, who was Scoot and Skip? Uh, Skip was coaching the white team. Right. And I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. All righty. Well, beautiful can, night. Can, can we get a score update? I want to know what the score is. We can can't we get, get one. Update? We can't get a score update. <laughs> it's not important. Sorry, everyone. We can't let you know. It's not important. For everyone asking what the score is, we're... We're not worrying about the score tonight. Uh, a little bit of a free kick here in the middle. Uh, Mason Cox just clotheslined Darcy Cameron, and it's gone back. Competitive for that ruck spot. Yep. But uh, Black team getting plenty of numbers back now. As the ball goes forward. Ollie Henry had his name written all over that, and he's taken a very good mark, and he will line up from probably about 45 out directly in front. He's got some spring, doesn't he? Very bouncy young Ollie. It's funny, isn't it, when you see a player, he's obviously brother plays at Geelong and is a, a role-playing sort of dour defender. He's, he is a very good interceptor, but um, Ollie then at the other end, just all flair and What's going on with Mason, grabs. Mason Cox on the mark here? Oh, he loves he the squat jump. squatting yeah. on the mark and then jumping up. It's he thinks it makes him seven foot five when he does that. Trying to get in the head, and there you go. Just when the white team needed to get a goal, they are 
back into it, I think. So might still need one or two more to even up the ledger. Um, looks like he's put on a bit of size over the off-season too, Ollie Henry. Yeah, he's um, he's been he's another one that's really hard worker. That's, that's what we love from, from our young guys here is that there's no questions asked that Jared Wade, um, new high performance manager, has come in and he's it's been a, a, a tough preseason. Like there's been a lot of a lot of um, a lot of competing, a lot of fighting out there for the footy, um, but no one's sort of turned up their nose. Everyone's just got their hands dirty and got to work and um, yeah, getting to work in the in the gym as well. So Ollie is one who who I'm sure will uh, will reap the reward reap the rewards for that. Um, You've rocked hopefully up can to have a, a strong year. You've rocked up to a few of the uh, W training sessions pretty pretty sore and probably after a full day's training. It looks like Wadey's putting you through your paces. Yeah, he cracks a whip. Um, just an observation here. We've got Darcy Moore playing on Jamie Elliott out of the goal square. So if the, the black team can go forward, that would be one of the one of the great battles, I think, in this, this inter-club match. And knowing knowing Darcy and the way he operates, would you expect him to peel off and, and back himself to try and intercept that? Or That's a silly question, Glenn. That's okay. Absolutely, you would. So, That's but, just, just so what we love it. is that Jamie would back himself to play 20 metres behind it, him and sit on his head. So, so then what happens? Well, Surely Darcy knows that. What do they say? An immovable object and an unstoppable force or something of the like? Oh, too much techno for me, mate. I don't understand any of that Great stuff. Great contest there. Is that Will <laughs> Kelly who came through and crashed the pack? I think it was. That was beautiful. And there's Murph just clearing the ball for the black team. But Nathan Murphy, another young player oh. who hopefully we'll see a lot of this year. Well, um, can, we say this... Back, the, the back with the flight mark. We say this all... He was better than Rewalt's. We say this all the time, and you would know this, that you cannot win a premiership without a redhead in your side. <laughs> Are We've you got suggesting all redhead? Well, you got a bit of a ginge tinge. Yeah, well, who was tinge. well? Hang, I've got Bulldogs. A what twenty twenty sixteen? I'm just going back. What, what year was I'm it? Trying to see everyone's hair. What year did the doggies win the sixteen? Sixteen. First of October twenty sixteen. Yeah. Now, who? Well, you can't win one without a redhead. So who was the Were redhead? Were you the redhead? Then? Without even knowing it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've just outed me. <laughs> well, there you go. So. We've got we've got a few guys with a bit of a tinge. Yourself, uh, Murph, he's full. And, yeah, Murph's uh, got more than a tinge. And Nobes, Nobes can try as much as he wants to to bleach it blonde, but I think deep down under all that, there's a, there's a bit of ginger there. I've too. actually a bit of a sidetrack here. And but I've actually sorry. gone into business with Nathan Murphy this year. Really? Um, we're opening a cafe. There's a couple of others on board as well. Brody Meyer Yep. Which we love, and um, and Cal Brown as well. Whereabouts is this cafe? It's on Auburn Road in Hawthorne. Oh. I wasn't actually bringing it up, so I could give it a shout out. But if we get in there, come, come on down, get yourself a coffee. We'll show us your Collingwood membership and we'll charge you double. Who's been the most useless on the tools? Well, Cal Brown turned up day one of the demolition wearing linen pants and seven rings on his fingers. <laughs> right. So safe to say he wasn't great. Seven rings. Hang on, seven how many rings. fingers has he got? Yeah, ten. Are oh, you talking about, okay, not on one hand? No, across two. Across right. two hands, yeah. Right, okay. Um... But Brody Mycheck has he was phenomenal in the early days. He just walked in, picked up the jackhammer, and spent about four That's hours that, on mate. it. Those Tazzy boys, they can do that stuff. Yeah, he used to dig trenches. Um, was a, a plumbing labourer and, and dug trenches, and that he uh, yeah he was he was the best of us. Um, the walls aren't painted all that well, despite how many hours were, were spent on it. But what I was going to say is that Nathan Murphy is an incredibly hard worker. He's opening a business. He's got studying two degrees at two universities, one in business, one in teaching. Um, so he's got a lot going on. A professional athlete with with a hell of a lot going on off the field as well. And just on the side, started shaping surfboards just for something yeah. different as well. He, he likes to get in the water. And yeah, he's, he's got um, a pad down in Torquay and he, he does like to get in the water. I'm too scared. Very sharky. Um, that concerns me, so I'll just leave it up to him. Sharks are very well fed down here, Ruffy. It's a very large seal population down at Phillip Island, so you'd be fine. Oh, good to hear. Yeah. I'll come out one day with you, Glenn. You can jump <laughs> the ropes. I'll be the decoy. <laughs> you can, uh, you'll be fine. I'll be in the shallows. Don't worry uh, about We'll that. take Fazzy out. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Yeah, we'll give yeah. him to the sharks. Yeah. We'll take Fazzy out. All right. So, back uh, to football, eh? Back to the footy. Here's my boy. Dux back with the flight. Just, Courage. Dax has just launched that one in, and it's... Uh, Come on out over there in the pocket, just near the food trucks. So, as we said, about 2,500 people have come down to the Holden Centre tonight. So, big shout-out to all the Magpie fans who've uh, who've come along. We're looking forward to uh, getting back to the MCG for the real stuff. And um, 
I think we'll be back there in, in round two when we face the Crows. It's 100% capacity as well. Yep. Round one, of course, we'll be uh, taking on the Saints down at Marvel. Um, and I expect that to be a big game. Obviously, only you know 50,000 capacity there. So I'm hoping we're going to uh, get a good turnout from Pies fans for round one. Great atmosphere at Marvel, too, with the roof closed. You can, you can have a smaller crowd, but... The, uh, the atmosphere there is phenomenal, obviously trapped in. The sound gets trapped by the roof and it uh, really rocks. And the AFL have done a, a bit of work there over the off-season too. So we've got two new super screens going to Marvel. Uh, we've only obviously got the, the two home games at Marvel this year, but two massive new super screens that have gone in. Um, and I think they've got a fair bit of work to do because Kanye is, of course, playing there the week before the season opener. So he's basically redesigned the whole place for his concert but anyway it's the warm-up show for the off, afl off kanye and on to uh trent bianco raising. another man with uh, a bit of flair and plenty of moves he's taken a nice little mark about 25 out on the boundary and he's gonna have a ping he's got a tough win here it's blowing the ball back into the field of play but i wouldn't put it beyond him he'll just bend it oh. around surely oh. we talked him up too much yeah, yeah. we did Come and there's the pinsky curse. just Working out of the back line. Got runners. Noble oh, did a really good a job there to just play, isn't it? pick that ball up and get it out wide. Kinnevin's work rate on the open side of the field. He might get on the end of it if it uh, just runs out of play. Yeah. That proppy leg that he was uh, resting just before seems to have magically healed. It's amazing how often players will lose their limp once they're a chance to get the feet. <laughs> <laughs> In front of goal too. Absolutely. Now the guy looks like he's put on a bit more size in the off-season. He's Tyler Brown, Ruffy. Yeah, Glenn, you can ask me if every player's put on some size, and all I can tell you is they've spent a lot of time in the in gym. The gym yeah, yeah, but he looks like he's really filled out. Yeah, he's a, he's a massive frame, Tyler, um, and the sort of frame that was always going to take a couple of years to put a bit more weight on it. But he and uh, he and his brother alike, Cal's obviously the smaller of the two, but their agility and their power is, is really phenomenal. So they're, um, <clears throat> I talked about Jamie and, and Jordan before, Jordy Degoe, and their ability to create space with their... That's more their strength and their size, whereas Cal and Tyler are, are more with their footwork and um, put on a couple of dance moves and break some ankles. I've been the victim a few times. <laughs> Cal, Cal and Tani, actually, obviously, we've got Tani Brown as a father-daughter in the AFLW side and so many similarities in Cal and Tani and how they play, just get so low to the ground and burst out of contests. And, you know, often you don't even really know where they're going to go, but um, they generally use the ball pretty well. They'd have to be. I can't fact-check this because I don't have a computer in front of me. They'd have to be the only family with three three siblings playing AFL and AFLW, wouldn't they? I'd say so. Yep, I think it's probably... We'd have to go back to the Danahers to uh, to have... I think the Danahers had four at one stage. Oh, the Selwoods. Were Selwoods, they, yes. The, the Selwoods time? were, yeah. yeah. At least three of them were. Yep. What's the oldest? I reckon the other one was playing as well. The other one? Scoot. The other Don't one. Scoot. Before, before um, my affectionately known as the other my, one. <laughs> before my time. So we've got Scott, Troy, Joel. Troy, that's the Adam. other one. Adam's the other one. Adam. And Adam. So there you go. Yeah, we had all of them playing at one stage. Yep. Adam was the only one I knew being over in WA. Yeah, he was West Coast, wasn't he? Here yeah. we go. Here's West the contest. There well, it is. there's the contest that we spoke about. And uh, Darcy love. Moore. And Jamie wasn't happy with that. <laughs> Jamie's not shy of giving feedback when the ball's not kicked to his yes. uh, kicked to his advantage. Yep. There's Liam McMahon coming out of the back line, as I said earlier, playing a bit of a different role this year. Thoughts on the hat on Murph during match sim? Oh, I think it's a vibe. Um, I probably would have gone the bucket myself. Arlo Draper clearly a bit cooler with it wearing it backwards. Go backwards. That not was doing, a really nice kick though there, there to uh, Will Hoskin Elliott. And uh, he's given it, and Jamie goes. That's where I like it. Are we going to call that 15 all? Darcy wasn't really manning in there, but I reckon we call it 15 all just so that we get uh, well, he shook, a bit of competition bit going. Action, yeah. He shook Darcy off. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Well, Jamie Elliott, a man who is also leading goal kicker at the club not that long ago, only a couple of years ago. What year, Glenn? No. It'd have to be 17, 18, thereabouts. Oh, no, 18 Might was injured even, a lot. No, so maybe 16, 17. It was, bit, it was, I think, either 15 or 16. He won our goal-kicking award, and he's lining up here. Let's see if he can put it through. He's definitely got the distance. It's a beautiful and finish, isn't that, from outside 50? There we go. Well, the black team, I think, slightly ahead here. Um, yeah, 2015, he uh, won our goal-kicking. I'll tell you what is a challenge is commentating a game of football when you don't know what the score is. 
We still think the black team's ahead. Mm. Well, I, we can't see the scoreboard, Ruffy. If anyone's listening to the can you the tell stream, us what the score Andy's is? at the ground. Yeah. Can, can, you the text, can you text? Can you text? Can you text in and tell us what the score is? <laughs> Have you got a phone number or do we text yes. you? No, just tweet us. One, we'll one, give you Ruffy's number. Not calling what I've said. <laughs> one, three hundred, one three hundred magpie. Um, no, we don't want to score. That's not the uh, the point of these uh, pre-season. <laughs> sorry, sorry. We've just been told to say we absolutely want to score. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a game of football. Someone's got to win, someone's got to lose. <clears throat> All right, white team with a bit to do here. The good thing about an intra club is that Collingwood always win. Yes. The fans. It's a win for it's a win for the fans. Well, probably only about five minutes left in this quarter. We don't have a score. Don't, don't worry though, that will feel like it stretches on for twenty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're pretty happy with the the quality of the hit out tonight, Ruffy. It's um, looks like the guys have, have dusted off the cobwebs pretty well. Are you happy with what you're seeing? There's only one answer I can give you again here, Glenn. I can't really say no. Um, but I am. I am wrapped with, wrapped with how the boys have gone about it. It's um, been pretty hotly contested. Um, fingers crossed, and I probably shouldn't even say, but fingers crossed we get through this last five minutes with everyone healthy. Um, there'll be a lot to, lot to learn out of it in review, but as I said earlier, and, and it's sort of continued this way, is that both teams, when they go inside 50, have been able to score, and, and that's been one of our focuses through the summer. So that'll be a big ticket item, and uh, uh, hopefully... Or from my perspective anyway, not sure what the coaches will say, but a big tick. Well, can the white team peg one back here? Campbell Husswaite there, one of our, our VFL listed players. Loves it over from 40 out directly in front. Loves a goal. Loves a goal. And kicks quite a few in the VFL. So a bit underwhelming with his celebration there, I thought. Well, it's not about the score, Ruffy. Oh, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, always amongst the goal kickers in the VFL, so good to see him uh, slotting one through here. Well, we're going to see Mason Cox go forward here, or is he heading into the centre of the ground? Just trying to get confirmation from the coaches, but can we see uh, we see a goal out of the big Texan? Well, I hope he does game. go back into the ruck, because otherwise... Oh, no, we've got... It might be Ash Johnson who's gone in for a, a centre bounce here. Good chance for him to, to demonstrate his, uh, his aerial ability. Well, he's got quite a decent spring on him, doesn't he, Ash? Very, very... Very good jump, I believe. Or well, he, he and Tyler Brown, I think, uh, the the top of the tree when it comes to the, the jumps testing we do. And Braden Maynard in the centre here. Bruzzy just looking for a bit of uh, midfield time. Yeah, there's a couple of interesting ones in there. John Noble spending time on ball here on the back end of the game. So this might be where you, you were talking about earlier, Glenn. The, the magnets have just been moved around a little bit just to see what guys have to offer in different spots. Reef McGuinness moving really well there, and he's just loaded up and put it to the top of the square, but nobody there in the white team. But Nathan Murphy's there for the black team to just grab that one. So he's going to try and clear this. I'm sure that what we think is a winning score to the black team is going to get them across the line. Well, we're winding down. So are we? do we want to be talking about who's who's impressed tonight? Who's impressed tonight, Ruffy? Who, who have been our... Our, our most impressive players. Um, oh, honestly, Jack Ginnivan has been yep. a, a standout from my perspective. He's um, impacted the scoreboard both himself and, and given off a couple of, uh, of lovely goal assists as well. Uh, so that's good to see from a, a young bloke. I think Ollie Henry's looked really good too. He's uh, got his hands on the ball quite a bit. So a couple of the younger players there. Pat Lipinski fitting in really well. He's had his hands on the footy plenty and um, yeah, using it really well, set up a one or two goals down there. Did he kick one himself? He did, I think. Yeah, he did. Or did he, no, he hit the post. Did he hit the post? Yeah, okay. he hit the post. And but Nick Dacos, um, another one inside that, that the fans will be wrapped to hear has, has played a really, really good game. No surprises there, really. No, the doco makers will be happy. Yeah. And uh, and ever since we started pumping him up up here, I think Nath Murphy has got to worked his way into the, the, the latter part of the game. He's and the other one I want to give a shout out to, Big Mason. Oh, nice. We've talked a lot about the goggles, but they're clearly doing their job because he's been plucking some, some contested marks tonight, which we love. I'm going to need a pair of them. I can't catch a cold at the moment, so I'm going to see if we can I'll have a chat to borrow them to me on Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> well, Mr. Reliable Brody Majacek just getting a late one there for the white team, so probably... He's kicked at least a couple. He has kicked a couple. Been good. So whatever the score is, it's a little bit closer now. Well, beautiful evening down here 
at the Holden Centre. What a way to finish your week. Friday night footy at the Holden Centre. Intra club. Nearly going to be as good as when we start lighting up the G again very shortly, Pies fans. As much as I've enjoyed here sitting here on the live stream, I can absolutely see myself sitting in the sun on the hill over there with a, <laughs> a nice can of beer. What are you going to say? A lovely uh, way to watch the football. A uh, long sleeve white top on. It would be nice to be playing, yeah. Don't get me wrong. That would be my preference, but uh, secondly, a close second, I reckon, would be yeah, sitting on the hill with a beer. Well, we got Ash Johnson going up there in the ruck against Darcy Cameron, and it's uh, fair to say they're not easing off in the last little patch here in this game. They're having a red hot crack, and there's Nick Dacos. Oh, McCreary is one who we haven't spoken about tonight, but he's he impresses me just with his speed. He's so quick, and his reaction time is, is phenomenal. So he he's... really impressed me last year. Um, his work up forward, he's just a bull, isn't he? Like his physicality for a young kid. Um, he's and just got such a presence. Here, that, that, that pressure he puts on. He's always at the contest, and he's always in your face when you've got the footy. So he um, puts the fear of God into a few of the uh, the defenders across the competition. That's what we like to see. Well, Jamie Elliott has come up the ground here and inserted himself into the midfield. Scott Pendlebury out of the back line into the midfield. So the black team here trying to get their hands on it and finish this off nice and strong. And there is Trey Rusco. I just couldn't finish that one off. Derek Egmolesi smith there got his hands on the foot. Beautiful kick, beautiful use of the ball. Fans might remember him from Richmond. Um, signed with the again with the VFL list um, across the offseason. So good to have him on board. Great pick up there for the Pies. Jamie Elliott's launched the forward and thought Ash Johnson might have got a little nudge there, but uh, umpire didn't want anything of that. So can the black team work it out here? They've hacked it forward, but it's just gone through. No, it didn't go through. It's bounced back in. And Charlie Dean just roving down back has uh, fired that one off to Tom Wilson. So another guy that got his opportunity last year, Tom Wilson, and he's um, probably best suited to, to playing down back. You think, Ruffy, if, if he comes in? Yeah, I do. Another one that's really composed. Um, another with a, ba a basketball background. His last game of basketball, I believe, was for Australia, for the Boomers, um, over in Iran. So he's got a, a pretty interesting backstory as well. But um, he, uh, yeah, he, he he came into the team and, and found his feet. Um, not too bad, I thought. He got his hands on the footy a little bit and, and had that the composed ball use out of the back line, which, which is obviously really essential in the game. So hopefully, again, we'll, we'll see him... Uh, donning the stripes. Well, Nath Kruger, they got his hands on it. He's just bombed it into the forward line. And, oh, could have been a mark there by Aiden Begg, but let that one go through. And Pendles is lurking, and he wants <laughs> he wants to get a shot on goal here and have a look at that beautiful finish there by Harvey Harrison, the young fella. Great to see a young bloke kick a goal. It's, it is an intra club, and some people might not think it's a big deal, but um, it's, it's always a great feeling to, to be able to come out in your, your first pre-season and, uh, and knock one over. Uh, gives you a lot of confidence and a uh, great way for him to, to finish this game out. And talking about Tom Wilson, he was a guy that put in an absolute mountain over work of almost two years bef before he, he got his opportunity. So we could see how dedicated he was behind the scenes. He, he never gave up. He, uh, he came in pretty raw, like you say, played basketball for so many years and then you know got got into the club and it took almost two years to get his uh his shot at it yeah came in as cat b rookie and we've actually we've had quite a bit of success with the um the cat b rookies obviously um tom jack madgen uh mark Keane, another who who have been able to come through um either coming from other sports or, or internationally and and um, make their way onto the big stage um and it's a it is a great um a great way for, for athletes from other sports to, to be able to come into the AFL system and <clears throat> it might take them a little bit of time, apologies, but they um, if they work hard enough on their craft, that they're clearly great athletes um, in their other sports as well, but that generally just holds them in good stead as Charlie Dean rolls off his opponent, takes a nice intercept mark. Well, we could almost expecting the black team to come out of the, uh, the centre with the ball there. They loaded up. They had um, Cal Brown, um, Jamie Elliott, and uh, Scott Pendlebury in the centre of the ground there with Mason Cox in the ruck, but white team have done a great job here just slowing things down, and Trey Rusko's come across there and put a nice spoil on Darcy Moore. It's so. a really nice vision there from Tom Wilson, the, the guy we were just talking about, able to find steel side bottom on the wing with a, a cheeky little left foot snap, and Tom's ability to use both sides of his body is what probably helps him to stand out amongst the group that 
you wouldn't really know if you came in and, and watched training whether he was a, a right or left footer. Brilliant athlete. Well, black team again lining up here with their midfield. This one looks like it's going to go out of bounds. I was at kind of couldn't quite get to it. So probably only a couple of minutes left on the clock here for our intra club. So again, big shout out to all the Pies fans watching at home and thank you to everyone that's come down to the Holden Centre tonight. We haven't got long to go. So uh, if you are here at the ground, you'll also get to enjoy the uh, the Suncorp Super Netball Magpies getting their dresses presented to them ahead of the 2022 season and then the AFL team to follow that as well. But a little bit different to how we'd normally do the season launch, Ruffy, with um, with everything that's be, been happening with COVID. It's been hard to plan. We, we'd normally be at um, Crown Palladium with all our fans doing our jumper presentation for season 2022. But um, we're doing things a little bit differently. But it's it's nice to actually get it done. In, in Absolutely. The season, I, I believe work. last year we had it planned. And on the day, I think we had to, to pull the pin. Whether it was last year or the year before 2020, we pulled the pin on the day. So... Have a look at that. Nathan Kruger was fantastic. Beautiful step. Yeah, beautiful pick up there. Looked very athletic. Um, but didn't get the goal, but still very impressive. Darcy Moore there just bringing the ball out of defence to Braden Maynard back to, in the back line. Just tried to sneak in the mid for, for a little bit roughy, and then they said, you better go back there. It's so. nice that, isn't it? Moore to Maynard to side bottom. Three of the big names. Bringing it out of the back line. A little chiseler. And he's going to get it back here, Sidey, and just run around a few blokes and nearly hunt it down. They've worked it nicely here, the white team. They might be able to get into a bit of space. And there's Maynard again. That's a beautiful delivery into the centre of the ground. So what can they do here? But Johnny Noble providing a great contest. The white team, though, still moving it forward. Can Trent Bianco make something of this? And he's dished it off to Bo McCreary, who's had a ping, but that is not going to get through for a goal. So just the point there. So a couple of minutes left on the clock. You see Finn McRae up and around those midfielders. What do you sort of think we'll see from him this year, Ruff? Um, great young man, Finn. I spent a bit of time with his brother at the Dogs, Jack, um, who's obviously turned himself into one of the premier mids in the competition. And... Um, Finn's really impressed me again one of those guys as I was talking about earlier with Liam and, and Reef, who um, have, have spent a lot of time and Poults as well have, have spent a lot of time really tight-knit group all drafted in the same year but spent a heck of a lot of time training together through the off-season and getting themselves into to good shape to come in and, and impact the, the pre-season and Finn was obviously able to, to debut and, and play a few games last year and I'd expect more of the same from him in 2022. Well he looked like he slotted in really well Finn too Took his opportunity when he had it. Oh, there we go. A couple of... Uh, yeah. That's Cal a hard head to smash into, Braden yeah. Maynard's head. That'll yep. show you how much the boys want it, though, won't you? Well, well the, the last seconds of the game and pretty decent head clash there between Cal Brown and Braden Maynard. Whistle's gone, I think, so that's all she wrote. Score, Ruffy? Uh, Magpies <laughs> won. <laughs> Magpies won. Well, great hit out. So hopefully uh, Braden Maynard looks okay. And um, Kel Brown, he's, uh, he looks like he's okay too. But yeah, like we, uh, we said, great to see the, uh, the boys having a red hot crack. And uh, uh, really looking forward to the, the countdown now for the start of the season proper. We yeah, certainly so. are. It'd be, it'd be great to see the guys even in the coming weeks in Morwell and then up in Sydney playing against the Giants. It's going to be great to, to see the guys out there. Well, we are not far away from just sneaking down to the boundary line, and we I think we've got a couple of, uh, couple of post-match interviews lined up. So don't go anywhere, Pies fans. We'll, uh, we'll be finishing off with a couple of interviews, and I think the players will be going around just saying a little bit of a, a thank you to the crowd. Obviously, it's we're still in a bit of a semi-COVID bubble with the players. We're, we still can't do too much with the fans and the public, but fingers crossed that all changes very soon, and uh, we'll be back at the G and the players will be high-fiving the fans after the games and giving out little footies to the kids and all it's the things that we things learned. One of the great things about our game that we've missed the last few years, I reckon, is that when you have a win, you get around the boundary and say good day and, and a thank you to the, the supporters who come out week in, week out. It's um, it's part of the game that we love and, and something that's, yeah, unfortunately fallen by the wayside over the last couple of years. So we're looking forward to, to getting that back, whether it's 
at the start of the year or, or towards the middle. We're not, not too sure, but um, I can assure you that everyone's looking forward to, to seeing it happen again. Well, Ruba, thanks to the great work that our AFLW uh, girls are doing. Um, the team's performing really well every week and we're getting the crowds down at Vic Park. We seem to be uh, pretty lucky with the weather. It's every time we play at Vic Park, it's... It's sunshine and the atmosphere is, is fantastic. So if that's anything to go by, I think we're looking like we're going to be full steam ahead for uh, for the AFL season. So yeah, definitely. It's um, we always get a c good crew down there, and um, it feels like there's yeah, it's pretty packed out um, with the the vibe we get and all the supporters always like to make a lot of noise for us, which is really appreciated and it definitely lifts us girls up. Um, so yeah, I think hopefully we're there next week. Uh, yep. All goes well, no changes. Um, next Sunday, I think. So um, hopefully people get, get down there. But Tassie this Sunday, we'll focus on that one against North and um, yeah, then focus from there. And of course, round eight at Vic Park in two weeks' time, that, oh, just over a week's time, sorry. Uh, that's Indigenous round when we take on the doggies. So um, well, there's always, you know, it's such a great occasion for all the clubs to celebrate. We'll have uh, Auntie Di, I believe, doing a welcome to country. We've got performances, we've got face painting. So if you are uh, if you're looking for uh, for for watching the magpies have a have a uh, a little bit of a hit out at um, at Vic Park, the um, the AFLW side will be there in just over one week. So we are just about to throw down to the boundary line where uh, Charles uh, or Chino, as he's uh, he's known here, our, our social media legend, he is with Darcy Moore. And uh, we're about to throw down to them right now, and they can do their interview and take it away, Chino. Oh, Rubes and Jordy up there. Darcy, fair clash out there today. White team gets up by 20 points. How did you see it play out? Black team. Black team got up. Black team. Um, it was it was good, mate. Yeah, it was um, obviously mix the teams up a bit, give everyone a bit of a run. Um, it was hot early, like lots of pressure. It's been a big focus of our preseason. So both teams smashing head, which was heads, which was good. But no, it was exciting, mate. It was good to see some, you know, first and second year players showing their strengths and stuff in front of the in front of the fans, who I'm sure are very curious about the squad and and the setup for this season. So it was, it was a good night. Unfortunately, Ruffy went down a few weeks ago. Charlie Dean stepped up. He's in the back line. How, how do you see him going since joining the club uh, in recent months? Yeah, I've been really really impressed with him. Um, he, Jordan's obviously got a lot of experience and he's going to be tough to replace for the early rounds but definitely Charlie's shown glimpses of real AFL traits and an ability to sort of learn and listen and um, you know he's improved so much in three or four months already so it's exciting mate I'll um, I won't jinx it but he's looking um, he's looking like a pretty good replacement so hopefully it comes to fruition for him. We've had a bit, fair bit of change in the last six months. How are you enjoying the new coaching style, Leper, Fly, Bolts and the likes? Mate, it's been awesome. It's been a really refreshing, like, fresh start without, um, you know, those of us that are a little bit more experienced still, still, you know, feels like the same club. Um, but, you know, we've just got a bit of a new approach and a bit of a fresh, um, fresh set of ideas, which has been awesome. So it's been the perfect balance, you know, between old and new and, um, you know, it's given us all a pep in our step, and I'm hoping that you know those more experienced guys get a bit of a get a bit of an uptick for the season, just from that, um, you know, the, the fresh faces. And yeah, I know personally working with Justin Lepich, it's um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So it's it's been good. On a personal level, you've been elevated to a vice captain of the club. Uh, you must be pretty proud of that to be voted in by your peers and staff members. Dude, absolutely. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, Fly was pretty clear that he wanted it to be quite a transparent process and, you know, in the process of laying the foundations for, you know, this footy team in the next few years and a lot of that has to do with, you know, values and behaviours and he wanted to be really transparent about, you know, the voting system and, um, you know, who was successful in that. So I think it was a really interesting way to do it. Um, but. Yeah, to be voted in was a, a huge honour and, um, you know, something I dreamed about as a kid. So it's pretty cool to, to have a bit of extra responsibility. You know, we're, we're a young side, we've got a lot to learn. So there's going to be a, you know, a lot of responsibility, particularly in the early rounds, to help the younger guys adjust to AFL footy. But, um, 
you know, but in the, by the same token, nothing changes. You just got to get out there and be ready to rumble. So I'm excited. For the fans watching at home, anyone we should look out for that's um, been starring in the preseason and even today? Yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one. There's always the fit guys at the front who look good in preseason, and then they don't get a kick when the season comes around. So, um, and I say that because I'm always at the back of all the running. Um, who's been training really well? I think Ollie Henry tonight was excellent. Really shows glimpses, um, which was really cool to see. Um, Finlay, Finlay McRae continues to show us, you know, Pendlebury like time um, in traffic, which is really cool. Um, Brody Grundy's trained really well. He's not out here tonight, but he's had a really good summer, like as good a summer as I've seen him do. And Isaac Quaino as well, like just see nothing but possibility for him as well. So it's exciting, mate. We just got to, um, you know, we're not there yet. We just got to build it slowly and a few weeks to go, an important few weeks, practice games, all that sort of stuff. And then hopefully by the time we roll out on Marvel and the MCG, we're um, ready to put on a show and play a good brand of footy. So, yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, Dars. Hopefully the fans get a bit of an insight um, to the game there. Um, we'll throw it back up to Glenno, Ruffy and uh, Roops. Good on you, Jordan. All the best, mate. Oh, thank you very much. Great work down there, Cheens. And Darcy Moore always speaks so well. Such a, a fine young man. So that is it from us here. Thank you to everyone that uh, joined us online tonight. As we mentioned earlier, AFLW are playing next week against the Bulldogs for round eight of AFLW at Big Park on the Sunday for Indigenous Round. So if you'd like to get down and watch the W team, get down there and do that. And also Team Girls Cup is on next weekend. So the Magpies netball team are in action out at the State Hockey Netball Centre Friday, Saturday, and Sunday against the best uh, SSN teams in the country. And we've got a discount code uh, if you head to tickertech.com.au and TGC22, so Team Girls Cup 22, you get 10% off tickets. So go down there and support Magpies Netball. Ruba, thank you for joining us tonight in the commentary team and uh, giving us some insight into the players. Great homework by you. I think you should, you've should. got a prime for a career in, in the commentary booth. Yeah, I was rubbish at school, never did homework, but um, for some reason, <laughs> the media, I'm happy to do it, which is weird. But no, it's been a pleasure. It's good to see um, all the boys get through unscathed. And um, yeah, no, good to see them up and fire and hopefully for a, ready for a big season. And Ruffy, thank you for joining us straight uh, out of the gym after training today. Good luck with your uh, recovery from the, uh, the surgery the other week and your rehab. We can't wait to see you back out. And thank you for joining us here tonight. Thanks for having me on, guys. Really appreciate it. Go do us a favour and shower. Yeah, no stress. <laughs> well, thanks again, Pies fans. Uh, as we mentioned before, we, we can't wait to get back to Marvel and the MCG, uh, where we belong, playing in those big games against all the other great sides. And we look forward to, uh, to seeing you at the footy in 2022. That's all from us. Good night and go Pies in 2022.